Hey guys, welcome to the show. 888-659-3727. Great to be here. Another Tuesday night here at the uh, the Ball Truth Compound doing the hair loss show. Welcome, guys. Uh, phone number 888-659-3727. Have a, uh, I think we have a pretty exciting show tonight. Um, obviously, we uh, have uh, Joe Tillman with us, uh, who will be potted up in a second. Uh, we are waiting for a call from Dr. Carlos Wesley so that he can uh, kind of give you guys an update on um, the, in my view, the latest and the greatest in surgical hair restoration. And um, as you all know, he has been working diligently to provide his uh, poloscopy procedure, uh, which is really... Um, what we're all hoping to be a scarless FUE hair transplant with possibly some uh, little extra stone in there, which we can we can talk about. Uh, let me go out the phone number, 888-659-3727. If you are new to the broadcast, don't know who I am or why I'm here, I'm a consumer advocate for men and women dealing with hair loss. I am the author of The Ball Truth and The Truth About Women's Hair Loss, and I also happen to be the founder of the American Hair Loss Association. Uh, I know that seems like a lot, but I've been doing this for, God, it's going on 18 years. Um, some, some probably think it's too long, but uh, I will tell you that I, I love doing what I do. I love the fact, no matter how much shit I've gotten over the years from people who don't really understand what we do here at The Ball of Truth, and uh, for the countless times that excuse me, that I've had to uh, try to explain what I do for a living to people who, you know, whether I'm at a party or whether I'm, you know, uh, being interviewed or just even to family members at certain points in my life. Uh, being the hair loss guy, being the, the guy who is um, putting himself out there as, as a hair loss sufferer, someone who's been dealing with hair loss for well over two decades, as someone who's been affected by it in a way that was it was it was it was such a profound way that I chose to make this into my career. That's a difficult thing to explain to a lot of people, but I have decided, and I decided a long time ago to make um, lemons out of lemonade, make lemons out, to make lemonade out of lemons, and to do my best to uh, to live my life the best that I can as a hair loss sufferer. Now, if you are watching this broadcast, and this is the first time you are seeing me. You're probably thinking, wait a second, this guy seems to have hair in his head. Well, I will tell you this, in the effort of full disclosure, this is a quasi-sham. I uh, wear a ton of hairspray. I've been lucky enough to slow the progression of my hair loss for the last 20 years using an FDA-approved drug. Uh, as most of you guys know, Finasteride. I actually take Proscar. And I paint the back of my head. I have tried partial hair systems. I have worn them at times uh, during interviews, you know, years ago. I have, uh, you know, painted my head. I considered having surgery at s several points in my life. But I do feel lucky enough where I have, uh, I'm in a position now where I've saved enough hair for such a long period of time that, hey, listen, I don't mind painting my head. And if someone happens to want to touch my hair and, you know, realize that it's like a, you know, it's, it's like a motorcycle home and it's so hard, what am I going to do? This is the life that I'm, you know, that I'm dealing with. And I have to say that I feel very fortunate uh, that I've been able to save as much hair as I have. So that's the reality of my life. I know there's a lot of guys out there who are, you know, just ashamed of the fact that they are concerned about their hair loss. You know, we live in a society that does not allow us, especially as men, to discuss our hair loss to discuss that we're concerned about our hair loss. And, you know, God forbid if we decide to have cosmetic surgery to replace our hair or to do something, you know, any, any type of, uh, you know, a surgical hair rest or not surgical or non-surgical hair restoration, um, for whatever reason, society just doesn't get it. And we feel that we will be looked at as being vain or insecure and, you know, we're talking to our family and to our loved ones and to, to, to you know, we, we get information and signals from women where they claim that it doesn't make a big deal. But the truth is, it does. It's our appearance. And, you know, the fact of the matter is people do look at us differently. There is no doubt 
no matter what they say, they may not be able to put their finger on it, but hair loss affects every aspect of our lives. Now, some allow it to affect their lives more than others. Uh, there's guys who are in the middle, you know. Uh, there are guys like Joe from Staten Island who are on one end of the spectrum. Uh, there are guys who are just able to shave their heads. I was not equipped to do that at a young age, and that's why we started this broadcast. That's why I've written my books, and that's why I do what I do. Okay, so at the top of the uh, top of the show, I said that we're going to bring be bringing on Dr. Carlos Wesley. But before I do that, I want to say hi to Joe Tillman, who is in TBT Studios North. Let's see if he's there. Joe, how are you, man? I'm doing pretty fine. Thank you very much. TBT Studios North. I like I like the sound of that. <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah, it sounds good. TBT yeah. Studios North. Say it fast ten times. I can't. And then it's I impressive. can't. I've actually I've actually gotten off the caffeine, and it's only been about a week, and I'm not thinking as clearly as I'd like to be. And I also have a really bad headache. The hell's wrong with you? You get off the caffeine? You know what? I, I, <laughs> what possessed you? I just uh -uh. I have I've been having some stomach issues, and that's maybe that's some TMI. And I'm like, you know what? It only seems to happen after I drink three or four cups of coffee. But is it happening now? This second? No. Well, like today? No. It actually took about three days, but I feel much better. Okay. Isn't that wild? I don't buy it. It's something else. Twenty year, <laughs> twenty years of coffee. Were you putting sh uh, sugar in it? Uh, no sugar, no milk, just black coffee. Well, there's your problem. You're well, suffering from no flavor. <laughs> That's, true. <laughs> That's true. So listen, I know I know that you're interested in speaking to Dr. Wesley. The entire internet, or at least the online commu uh, online hair loss community, has been kind of clamoring to get information, any information they can about this, you know, really uh, potentially state of the art. And I, I, I do think it's state of the art. Uh, scarless hair transplant procedure. Well, we're going to break the internet. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. I actually, he may have dropped. I don't know. Let's see. Let me see if this is. This is him. I'm not even sure if this is. It may be somebody else. I'll give it a shot. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Is this Dr. Wesley? This is Dr. Wesley. Hey, Doc. How are you? Hi, Spencer. How are you doing? I'm okay. You know what? I keep thinking a different area code. Than you actually have on your phone. So I was looking yes. for a New York area code, and that's not it. So I'm glad. <laughs> there's I'm, I'm, there's, I'm there's glad. So, so many different New York area codes. That's true. That um, you have uh, uh, two one two seven one eight six four nine, right? Yes. Yeah, and three four uh, seven. Three four seven. So anyway, Doc, you, thank how you. How you doing, Doctor Wesley? Doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a while. We, um, I, I think I told Spencer we, we met back finally at the conference in San Francisco 2013. Yes, I remember that, Joe. Yeah, yeah. And um, but before we get started, I just, I just want to say um, I am, as, as this is, I was telling Spencer this um, the other day that. Well, that, the, you, that, you, that you were giving him crap at the beginning. Yeah, I, I, was, I was giving you a hard time about it. That wasn't because, nice. I, I remember I know. that too, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, but, but, he, but, but here's the thing. It's okay? only fair. There, it, you, and, you, and you know this as well as I do. There are so many things that come along where people make claims, people make uh, these, these um, you know, the, even presentations that are f full of nothing, right? And so it, it's, it's my job um, just, just the way I'm wired and, and because of, of, of how I want – people to understand how this industry works to always be critical to always be questioning and that's what I, I was doing with you but I got to tell you before this continues I, I just want to say that you have my respect now because I was telling Spencer this you have not let go of this and you have continued to push it and to refine it and to make it better than it was you know far better than it was before and I just got to tell you that um, I respect you for that and I'm excited about what you're doing. Oh, I, I appreciate that a lot, Joe. I have to, I, I have to sort of distribute the credit though, because it really isn't just me that's been persistent. There's a team of engineers, and I can tell you there there is not a day that passes where they're not working on this device, working on all the 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 minutia, things that are far over my head in terms of the way uh, parts interact, or, um, the way it interacts with tissue. Um, there, there's really a whole team behind it, and. Yes, I was the, the, dri the driving force initially, but now it's, it, it, it really does take a village to get something like this to, to start working the way that we want it to work. So um, right. it, it's great. I've I got to say, it, 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 it is taking forever. I can understand why um, people who thought that maybe it would just be 
ready overnight after making a claim something's presentable the following week. Well, I can see why they'd be frustrated with the duration yeah. of time that's passed, but, but I, can, I can promise everyone that there really is not a day that goes by without um, team members re- really working on this and all the, uh, the different aspects that are required to make it safe and effective and, and, and uh, worthwhile and something that we can really introduce. And, so, but I, but I, I do appreciate that. I appreciate what and, you and, said. And I, and I think that what, what you said is really important because far too many times we, we, we see doctors coming on board, uh, you know, some, some forum or, or some avenue where they're talking about something they're developing and they're doing it themselves. And right. it doesn't have, I, I mean, I, I don't want to step on anyone's toes by saying this, but a lot of times it just doesn't have the credibility that, that you're having with your procedure that you're developing because of the fact that, like you said, it takes a village, and that's what you've, you've, you've done. You've found a village of engineers. Well, I also think the fact that, you know, uh, Dr. Wesley is really taking his time. He is doing it the right way. You know, when, yeah. when uh, Doc, when you originally spoke to me a couple of years ago, obviously I was initially, you know, I, always, I look at everything with a jaw on the side. But right away, as soon as I saw uh, the PowerPoint presentation that you showed me, and sh- as soon as you had the opportunity to really explain the technique, I – in essence, kind of put my neck in the line, and I said, you know, I think that this can possibly be a game changer. And I got a lot of shit for that. A lot of the doctors in the industry, after they saw that broadcast, and I actually think that you uh, have a clip of it on your on your website, I mean, they were pissed off. They were telling me that there's no way that this can work. Why would you get behind something like this? You know that if you put this on your show and if you put that out on the Internet, it gives it a lot of credibility. And I told these guys... Look, I'm, you know, I'm, I may not be a, a scientist. I may not be a physician. I've been doing this for a long time. And, you know, there was a time when everyone was giving me crap about promoting follicular unit transplantation as being state-of-the-art back in 1998. Right. You know, so um, I will say that, um, I, I, listen, I'm all for the evolution of this. And so far what I'm seeing is it's pretty mind-blowing. Well, well, thanks. I, I think that um, I can understand why the doctor, I don't know who they were or what, what they said, but I can understand why initially they'd be skeptical. It was just like Joe was saying, there's always claims out there. And this was a claim um, without having seen anything. All they, all they heard were your words and your, and, and your impressions. That's right. But without having actually seen what you were able to see and what everyone's a- able to see now, even though there's plenty that, that we haven't really been able to show people um, which which we certainly can. It's just it, it's um, there's so much information that we can show that wouldn't really be informative in a sense. Right. That um, I think without with without all of that um, th- that explanation, I think I think the claims. I guess I can see why they would be a little bit skeptical. But my my hope is that as people see more and more, and it makes more sense to them, and they see that we're really addressing all the the um, potential concerns that, that people would have that that they'll see the way we see it and it's something that really just makes sense. It's just taking what we already know in our field and sort of putting it together a little differently and it just sort of makes sense how, how this how this really could work. Well, now, go ahead. theory is different from practice because I tell you, it's, it's, it's one thing in theory for it to click and it's another thing in practice for it to click and it's, it's been clicking but it's really hard. And so the, the fact that everything is so small and any any little adjustment is so small it really is uh well, it, it takes a long time well and I that's really also so fortunate with the team again the team of engineers that's working on this they're phenomenal and that that and, that, that is a and, and that is a an issue that a lot of the guys have brought up to me they're like it'll never reach critical mass it's going to be too difficult to do maybe dr wesley will be able to do it in his practice uh, but it's gonna. There's gonna be a tremendous learn, learning curve, and then they talk about all the possible issues and damage that can be caused beneath the scalp. And I'm just like, look, you know, it, what my job is to get this information out to the public. My job is to, you know, take a closer look than I think most guys or, or I would say most physicians in the field might be willing to do. Uh, for whatever reason, whether they don't want to change the infrastructure of their practice or whether they have their own devices or they're attached to different companies. You know, so I wanted to put it out there and really, you know, be as fair as possible. Now, I think, you know, and I'm glad that Joe is actually on the show tonight because I remember telling him, listen, man, you shouldn't be so critical because I've seen it. And I think that this has real possibilities. And, and, and 
you know, Spencer, Spencer told me that, and, and that's when I was like, okay, well, maybe there's something to it. But I got to say, and I am patting myself on the back, I predicted what you were doing. <laughs> I okay. figured out. I figured out that you you had you had a that you're you're going in as as you were. Of course, I didn't know the details, but um, I, again, I, I'm just I'm impressed with the the latest video that you put up and the presentation, the amount of detail and work that you've gone into this presentation, and uh, and the way that the product is shaping up. All right, now listen. We we do have a lot of phone calls. Uh, we but I definitely want to uh, to talk about some of the specifics of the technique. So maybe briefly for the guys who have not seen the video, for the listeners who don't actually you know go to Ball Truth Talk or any or, or to any of the forums, what exactly is this technique and how does it work? Right. So the um, the the term is is piloscopy, and the idea is just like um, when you're doing. Uh, endoscopic surgery of your joints, that's called arthroscopy. Endoscopic surgery of your belly is laparoscopy. Well, pilus is, is Latin for hair, so we're, we coined the term piloscopy. And the idea is since everything we do in surgical hair restoration, if it's FUT where we take the strip or if it's FUE where we punch them out individually, what we're trying to obtain is the stem cell containing portion of the hair follicle, which lies beneath the skin surface. And, and it's all throughout. There's a couple different... Um, regions within the follicle that contain the stem cells that are essential. But everything we're trying to obtain is beneath the skin surface. And so essentially what this approach is, is it's a way of harvesting the stem, stem cell enriched portion of the follicle without traumatizing the overlying skin surface each time you're doing that. And so you can make a, a tiny incision. Right now it's 1.4 centimeters um, anywhere within what we call the safe donor area where, where the hair is most likely to be permanent throughout your lifetime. You can make a tiny incision within that, and then you can you can undermine, meaning you can actually create a natural plane of separation within the scalp beneath the follicle. And then once you've established that plane of separation, then you introduce the instrument, and then you can take them one by one. You don't want to take every hair, obviously, but you can take every third or fourth, just like what you do with follicular unit extraction, and you're you're harvesting the hair without traumatizing the overlying skin surface. There's a saline flush that, that takes the hair follicles when they're beneath the skin, passes them through this, this liquid tubing into a storage vial, and then you have access to each of those um, as, as they come out, and you can immediately transplant them. So it, it has many advantages, but it, I think a, a, a simple way of initially presenting it is it's, it's taking the best of both worlds of FUT, which is the strip harvest that contains that essential uh, protective tissue around the stem cell containing portion and FUE where you don't have the linear scar, you don't really have much evidence of scarring even though there, in terms of surface area there is, so you, you're able to have um, really no external evidence of donor scarring and you're able to uh, harvest very healthy grafts that have not only the stem cell containing portion but the, the all-important surrounding tissue that, that protects it in many and it's been looked at many different ways how this protective tissue increases the survival of transplanted follicles. And there's debate as to why it does, but, but the many different studies have shown that it really does enhance the survival of the, um, of the hair follicle once it's transplanted. Well, there's a lot, lot of guys out there who are going to be at, you know, and, the, and a lot of the questions are, okay, when you're separating this plane uh, underneath the scalp, uh, what does that do? How do you do that? Can it cause any, any type of damage? Are there damages to nerves? Uh, blood vessels, is there a possibility of uh, complications that uh, would not arise during traditional hair transplantation? Talk, let's yeah, talk about that. Questions. Th yeah, those are all great questions, and they're questions that we have, uh, we asked ourselves and we've explored. And I can say, firstly, it's something that's done quite often in, in uh, different scalp surgeries already. At different layers along the scalp, there's plenty of Undermining. Sometimes they go closer to the skull uh, than we do. But even in, in common day FUT, when you're closing a really, really tight incision, then you you sort of cut beneath the beneath the follicles and into the uh, the, the fatty tissue, the subcutaneous tissue. And there's there's uh, dense connective tissue as well. But that's something that's done done quite often already. And um, in the studies that we've done uh, on on live patients. It, it does not lead to to any permanent hair loss, or in, in our case, even any temporary hair loss. Now, that's because it's done properly. It, theoretically, if you have someone, um, a doctor that just goes in and doesn't really concern themselves with the depth 
of that undermining, then that would be a problem. And that's why one of the things that Joe alluded to, I think it was, was, was or I guess it was you, Spencer, that it would be a really tough learning curve for physicians. Well, that's one of the things that's taken so long, is we want to make an instrument that's very user-friendly. And we have to assume, we have to make it usable for pretty much every doctor. Yes, they'll have training, and yes, they'll, they'll be shown exactly how to use it, but it has to be something that pretty much every doctor um, can use, because if it is too complicated then it's a, and it's a phenomenal instrument, but someone uses it improperly, well, that reflects badly on, on the approach as a whole. And so uh, it's based on what we've seen and based on um, what we do already in uh, different scalp surgeries, that, that uh, as far as, as damage to the hair follicle, uh, permanent damage, that doesn't seem to be an issue. As far as nerve damage... Um, well, I think, I think that's the biggest issue. You know, there's different techniques. Guys just have a different type of finesse. And you were talking about, you know, the depth and the possible issues you can have with not being able to control that depth, especially if a doctor doesn't really, you know, take the time to learn. How can you make that dummy proof? Is that possible? Well, there, yeah, there, there, it's certainly possible, and that's one of the things that we've done um, with the dissection tool that's being created. It actually ensures that you're at a certain depth from the skin surface, so you, you, it actually locks into a certain depth, so you're never able to go uh, more shallow than a certain distance. Um, it also has a, a blunt dissection component to it, so you're not going to be cutting uh, ev- everything that's there. A lot of it will be done uh, using just the force of separation, doing a blunt dissection. That's one of the ways of, of, um, not, uh, of ensuring that you're not going to sever uh, a nerve is, is using a blunt dissection. So, now, what again, happens when you really... do? What happens when you do? Like, so, so you're going in there, you're going there, and they're bluntly, and you're making the separation. I mean, how does the scalp eventually, especially if you're doing a large area, how does it eventually, you know, once it's undermined, it uh, undermined? How does it? Does it just naturally reattach itself? Well, you want to apply a pressure bandage for a while, and, right. and that's that's something that. Initially, again, and, and these are great questions, and we're starting off relatively small. Your, your scalp, the dense connective tissue has, compo- has compartments within it, and you can go to one or two compartments, and, and that's one of the things that we'll continue to explore. Right. So far, it hasn't been an issue. Um, the work that we've done throughout the entire safe donor area has been on cadaveric tissue. Right. Um, and and when, we're, when we're continuing our clinical trials, um, we'll start small. We'll continue to... Uh, expand the working area, and and so each of those questions will be will be addressed. And and I wish I could, I wish I could answer all of those very directly and say absolutely yes or no. Um, but that those are things that will take just as we've done with the development. We'll take them um, in a very controlled fashion, and we'll continue to monitor uh, each each individual as they as they um, progress. I can tell you the patients, and we we had a couple of clinical uh, trial patients in. Uh, July of last year, and and they're pretty small compartments. I would say the um, the undermining was done. I'd say about ten ten to twelve centimeters tall and about eight centimeters in width, and all all of those patients did fine. And and um, the the issue at that time was just we wanted to perfect the angulation of the instrumentation uh, beneath the skin surface, and that's why we went back to the drawing board and and um, and made a new iteration of the device. But um, these are all these are all great questions, and again, the the full the full undermining throughout the extent of the safe donor area, we did that on cadaveric tissue, and we were able to use the instrument effectively all throughout. And that was the real question initially: was can this the surgical device uh, achieve those angles that are consistent with what you see in the occipital, which is the back of the head, the parietal, which is right. sort of around and behind the ear, and the, and the temporal area? Well, we can't quite get the temporal area. Um, above and in front of the ear, but we can get the occipital and parietal, uh, mechanically at least. Um, but we, we haven't done that in, in live patients to that extent. We've really just contained it to throughout the occipital region. What I find interesting is that you're, you're talking about um, like a, a depth control mechanism, which is, is pretty interesting because that's still a relatively new concept in, in, uh, in hair restoration in general. I mean, you know, normally when you're talking about uh, depth control, you're talking about uh, recipient site creation. And then several years into the advent of FUE, you had some doctors that kind of kind of started to introduce that as well. But you're building that into the component from the beginning of, on this. And 
um, I, I think it's really important that you do. I'm glad you're doing that because the, the depth of skin tissue or donor tissue will vary from patient to patient, just like the depth of, of a hair follicle. Um, you know, you'll have some hair follicles that go as deep as 3.75 millimeters, some go as deep as 5 millimeters, uh, depending on ethnicity and, and other factors. So um, could, you, could you maybe explain a little bit more about how you're doing the, the, the depth control? I'm really in, interested in this aspect of it, and I got some follow-up questions after. Yeah, sure. And it it was sort of an evolution. I think this will start to to shed light on what has taken us so long because even even with the undermining aspect of of this procedure, there was initially a um, an ultrasound component to that, and and that that was something where we you could actually see the blade a certain distance from the skin surface, and and what we have now is um, we have a, a blade that you introduce. And there's a sensor that actually passes it passes along the skin surface. And essentially, what you're doing uh, on the outside is you're, in, you're you're putting the blade in, and then you're pressing the sensor. Um, it's it's sort of a little silver ball that rolls along the the surface of the skin. And and the depth that you're setting has is basically dictated by the length of the follicle. And you'll, you you can do a couple of FUE punches to get a sense of the length of that individual's follicle. And then you're going to be probably about two, two, three millimeters below that, and you're just basically rolling the ball um, along the skin, along the, the surface of the skin, and that's what the device, the, the actual uh, dissection component is, is um, beneath the surface at that, that fixed distance. So, so what you're, what we're talking about is a, um, it's interesting the, the, the sensor you're talking about, but it's, a, it's essentially similar to um, a contraption where you can have like a magnet on top of a magnet mimicking uh, the direction if it's if you're like moving it on a table. Right? It's interesting that you said that because that's the way when I when I was speaking to Dr. Wesley a few week actually a couple of months ago, I kind of made that comparison. Yeah. And while that's kind of a crude comparison, I mean it's 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 pretty similar. And and, and I yeah and, and I like the, you know me I like the simple analogies anyway and I'm a simple guy but um, my my question about about um, the insertion of the blade into the the tissue is. Mm-hmm. How far is this radius that you can uh, expand outward from the insertion point to where to where once you once you um, how can I put this once you exhaust uh, that area of the donor zone um, how far can you go before you have to remove the equipment and go into a different area to continue throughout the donor zone? So to to answer that question, we we did a single incision in the center of um, the occipital, basically the center of the back of the head, just, a, yeah. just above that little bump called the occipital notch that everyone has in the back of their head. Mm-hmm. From that single incision, we were able to get to just behind one ear on one side, sweep down to the bottom of the safe donor area, and get all the way to just behind the other ear on the other side. So that's no about kidding. 12, 12 you, 13 you, centimeters, sure. So, so basically yeah. you're, lo- you're looking at no more than, uh, from what you're saying, it sounds like no more than two incisions, but most likely one, to be able to right. ra- radiate out into the entire donor zone. That's right. And that was that's, and this that's is fantastic. All, like, Why do you think I'm so excited about this, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> well, that, I, I figured was, I figured there'd be some limitations on on the the the, the depth of uh, of the reach or the the extent of the reach. I thought that there might be maybe a few inches he- over in this direction. You know, maybe some sort of radius of no more than than a few inches to where you'd have to have maybe three, four, in, you know, these one one centimeter long incisions into the scalp to the back, but because it's just one, maybe two at most, that, that's, that's another aspect of it being a game changer. And this is, this is mechanically speaking. Again, what Spencer alluded to, I, I, can't, I can't speak to quite yet with, with how, if we're, if we're undermining all of that, uh, will that be something that, that remains stable? I think so, and that, that's, yeah. that's what I can say with confidence. Um, but as far as what we've done mechanically on, on cadaveric scalp, uh, cadaveric models. Yes, absolutely, we can do that. And I can't tell you how co- how complicated that is from uh, angulation. There's the angle and direction that the instrument has to assume in order to to maintain its uh, its consistency with the hair follicles because they shift all throughout your scalp. And right. that was one of the things we've sat down. Uh, the the head engineer Trevor and I have sat down many times where he's come up with all sorts of different designs to be able to capture that, and he's been able to do it. So. So mechanically, it's something that we can do, and that was 
That and, was step one. And, you know, and that's why when I see, and I, I really do try to spend as little time online reading the form as possible. I usually read it, you know, before the program really quickly. Uh, but, you know, I, I, when I see the conversation, when I see the dialogue, when I see the frustration and, and the fact that, you know, it, it just seems like people don't fully comprehend or they can't grasp what it takes to develop not only the device, but, you know, to, to turn this into something that's going to, like I said, possibly reach critical mass that every physician who's in the industry can possibly learn how to use. I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of work. It, it takes years and years of research. And, you know, the, the bottom line is these guys want to know when is this coming out. I know you can't answer that question at this point, or can you? Well, there, there's uh, also, the, also the, the, the aspect of the fact that this is, well, it's not a one-man show anymore. You know, Dr. Wesley is not working with a, a large international conglomerate that's got all these un, un, you know, unlimited resources to be able to throw at uh, the, the tooling and manufacturing of, of, the, uh, of the pieces of the, the machinery and be able to make changes on the fly. Uh, th this is something that I imagine is a, a, a still a pretty small uh, endeavor uh, speaking you know, in, in general terms. And, uh, yeah, so it's, it's like, it's like changing uh, direction in a battleship. To, uh, you, you can't turn, turn on a dime in a battleship. It takes a while to, to change direction and, uh, to get where you need to be going. You do have good analogies, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, the question that, that you asked that I think people are really honing in on, and we get this question 10, 10 to 50 times a week is when will it be ready? And, um, so when will it be ready? Tomorrow. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what, what I can say is my, my hope is that it will be um, available for, for relatively small sessions by the end of this year or the beginning of next year. But what, what I can tell you is this. Um, I'm heading out to our main engineering facility. It's in, it's in Utah uh, in about three weeks where we have the newest iteration and and that was the one that was able to obtain the graphs that I showed in the most recent video that are on the surgical glove. Um, that, that was a big change and since from July until January, just simply being able to perfect the angulation and, and really being able to, to match what's in, what's in the scalp. So that tiny little change took about six months and, and not tens of thousands, but hundreds of thousands of dollars to, right. to do that. Um, now that that's once that's done, then you have the 3D renderings, this and that. You have to go through the sterilization, um, the cleaning and sterilization processes. And, and finally now, it's something that will be ready for me to go out and try test on cadaveric models in about three weeks to, towards the, the end of April. And then, and then once, that's, once that works exactly the way we want it to, we'll take – now we're making a bunch of, of, of um, duplicates of this device. So we'll take all the sterile ones. They're autoclavable, and we'll be able to start using those. And we'll start really small. We'll start, and we did this in July with a couple of patients, 10 graphs, 15 graphs, 20 graphs. We'll see, we'll make sure those graphs come out just as we, just as we want. We, you can tell in hair transplantation if a graft is a healthy graft that's viable or if it's just not. And so once we see that we're getting predictably healthy graphs, then, then we'll go up to... 30 graphs, 50 graphs. Meanwhile, we'll see how those patients, um, how they're healing, how they're feeling. I can tell you that in our first, um, or our most recent trial last summer, the patients really actually liked the, the feel of it. It was something that was quite comfortable. You have sterile saline sort of passing along the, the back of your scalp, and you, and you have this sort of soothing whir of the, of the motor. Uh, we have some pretty funny quotes from patients that have gone through it that they actually was quite a comfortable experience. So we'll get a sense of how, how everyone feels, how everyone is healing, and we'll, we'll talk about the, um, any potential nerve damage. Again, I can tell you based on the people from last summer that they, there wasn't any discomfort or nerve damage, and we can, um, we'll continue to evaluate that. And then, and then um, we'll move up, like I said, to 30 to 50 graphs. Do the same thing. Wait a couple of weeks, make sure everything is going well, then move up to 50 to 100. Um, and that will, it'll be a stepwise process, and, and we'll continue to evaluate how people are recovering. Um, well, look, I think that's, obviously that's the only responsible and ethical way to do it. Uh, there are so many doctors out there who, unfortunately, in this field and other, you know, uh, other areas of cosmetic surgery, 
that will kind of really experiment on their paying patients. And I'm, talking, I'm not talking about experiment the way you're experimenting. I'm not talking about doing 10 graphs at a time or 20 graphs at a time. You know, there have been guys who have, you know, especially, and Joe, you've seen many of these patients, guys who have gone in for like massive, you know, body hair transplants, and especially at the beginning of, you know, when, when they first start to talk about different types of procedures and FUE, and there's just, there's so many walking wounded out there. Now available body hair transplants. Step right up, fifteen thousand grafts. That's Come right. on in. That's, exa- that's exactly <laughs> the way. You know, and you know what? I know, that Dr. Wesley, you have probably been contacted by so many patients who want to be in your trials, who are willing to experiment and have larger procedures, who are just so desperate to get this done. And I really admire you for doing this the right way. I want to get to the phones. We have a lot of a lot of calls in the line. Let me give out the phone number. Uh, so when we drop a call, you guys can call in. It's 888-659-3727. Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? Well, hello, Spencer. Hi, Joe. Dr. Wesley. Hello. This is Dave Artista. Hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. Dave. How are you doing? How are you, man? How's it going, Dave? Doing well. I'm doing okay. It's great to hear from all of you. Good. So what's what's going on? It sounds like you're dropping stuff in the back in the background uh, there. What's going on? <laughs> dropping? <laughs> I don't know. It may, it may have been Joe. <laughs> So, what do you mean? So what's Joe, going on? I think it was Joe. <laughs> well, uh, you know, a lot of people on the uh, Bold Truth Talk forum have asked a lot of questions. Uh, they wanted me to ask Dr. Wesley, but it seems you've covered just about everything. Well, I mean, what what specific questions? Uh, I want you to kind of read some of them just in case we haven't covered them. Okay. Um, Dr. Wesley? Uh-huh. Yeah, he's you there. don't mind if I ask you these questions, do you? Sure, fire, fire away. What is, is the first question? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Mike's twenty three asked this. Artista, could you ask Dr. Wesley? Uh, pilos, how, how do you pronounce piloscopy? Is that it? Uh, p- p- piloscopy. I've, I've heard yeah. so many different piloscopy, versions. Exactly. It's actually sort of humorous when patients come in and they the the company is is pi- pilofocus. Although some patients refer to it as Pilophagus, right? I think I used p- to call p- it. Pili- I used to call it paleofocus. I think. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He says if piloscopy will be able to punch out old graphs without leaving any marks, I have some graphs that were placed really poorly from my first procedure, and I'm wondering if he could punch them out and then reinsert them into the hairline or back into my donor scar. That's actually a really good question. Yeah, it, yeah. it is a great question, and, and that is certainly one of the um, one one of the the things that we're hoping that it's going to be able to do. We haven't done that yet, but I, I quite honestly don't see any reason why it wouldn't be able to do that. The angle and direction would be challenging, uh, but that's something that we yes. um, just like with FUE. Once you sort of get the hang of it, you can you can do that, and as long as they're not placed too too closely together. Um, it would it would be something that if there's space far enough apart, you can do that because you don't want to take every single one, just like with FUE, um, uh, un- until we're certain that you can. Again, the, the density at which we can harvest graft isn't known at this point. We'll start very conservatively uh, and then and then keep on harvesting a little with a little greater density just to make sure that everything heals appropriately. But that's certainly one of the, one of the features uh, that I imagine will be uh, possible with this, since since you're harvesting hair follicles, and and taking the uh, the stem cell containing portion and not traumatizing the overlying skin surface, I think that'd be great, a great uh, attribute. So, now, now let, let me let me ask a question here, okay, along those lines, and and that's that's a great question that uh, that that Dave asked on on behalf of the poster, but um, you know as well as I do that. You know, when when a graft is placed wrong, um, mis misangled, misdirected, however, that there's there are usually other complications that go along with it, like pitting, yeah. um, other types of recipient site scarring uh, that that we see in in cases like this. So, would it? I mean, is there actually an advantage to pilofocus with this? Where uh, because as far as I understand, if you go under, you're simply removing. Uh, assume we're talking about pilot focus for for the frontal uh, re- recipient zone uh, um, repair of the grass, but if you're pulling those out with the pilot focus, you're just pulling the hair. You're not addressing the scar tissue around that at all. Is that correct? That's true. You're, yeah. You're, so you're, so you're, I, I I would assume 
that 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 going in with a traditional FUE punch to remove not just the hair but also the scar tissue along with it would would be maybe I you know I, I don't know all the details but possibly a, a better and um, more more direct way of addressing the situation. Yeah, but it doesn't. I mean, you're leaving it, a punctate scar. Yeah, yeah. And, and you'd be leaving a series of punctate scars on on the hairline of a patient. So uh, mm-hmm. that would be a difference. And I also think that since we do know that uh, grass will grow into in, in scar tissue in, in some cases, sometimes it doesn't it doesn't work out that well. Yeah. I'm assuming that if you remove it from underneath, you're not leaving an extra uh, a separate a new wound that will end up scarring, even if it is sutured, or even if it just you know. I mean, I know that for for a while uh, years ago, Bob Bernstein used to do corrective work that way. He would go in there with you know with a small punch, remove the grafts. And separate them under microscopic dissection and mm. to, you know in, into naturally occurring follicular units, and then redistribute them. But there would always be a waiting time where you know he would then su- you know make little sutures, you know like a kind of like a cross stitch, and then implant those grafts around that. And I mean, if you look really closely, you could still see their scarring. Um, I'm assuming that if there's already scarring there, you probably, I mean, again, I'm not a physician, you probably wouldn't want to create any more scarring as opposed to, I know you're, what you're saying, Joe, is that your idea is to take away the scarring that was originally there, Yeah. but you're creating new scarring anyway. Well, it's, it's a diff, from what I've seen in, in, in various practices is, um, you know, have, having a, a small punch FUE removal of a, um, of, of a, of a, uh, a pitted graft or some sort of scar formation around the graft, uh, the the scarring is far less visible than the initial scarring that w- that's being removed. Because assuming that I've we're doing that it too. right, yeah, I've seen you know, that assume, assuming it's done correctly the on the removal. So um, you know, I, and I'm talking, I, I've seen this on plugs, I've seen this on uh, quote unquote follicular unit grafts uh, that actually weren't flicker unit graphs and even actual flicker unit graphs. Cause it all comes down to the incision size, uh, and, and how that graft is inserted, stuffed, whatever. But, um, you know, I, I just find it interesting. I mean, it, if, if it could somehow remove that pit or whatever that scar tissue is along with it, I think that'd be fantastic. But the way I understand it, it's simply pulling the hair out, uh, inversely through the, through the tissue. Correct. Yeah, I agree with that except for the yeah. simply part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well again, also not, again, not all. Like, the, the, there are other instances when so so not all grafts in a hairline that are unwanted are are pitted, or, or no, even no, or yeah. even plugs. And, and there's yeah. plenty of instances where a doctor may have uh, assumed incorrectly that a person would have an appropriate hairline at this at this height, and and then you you realize down the road, you know what? Maybe the recessions would be would look more natural if they're if they're if they're maybe a little bit deeper, and so yeah. this would be the type of thing that potentially again, uh, this is this is speculative, but I don't see any reason why not that that for that type of patient this would certainly be um, a, a nice option where where they don't have a lot of the, the additional complications that you're talking about. They just simply want to want to uh, take out a couple of the hairs from the hairline and use them someplace else, yeah. and they don't want the uh, the punctate scarring that FUE uh, an FUE punch may leave. Yeah. Well, Dave, I mean, overall, it does depend on the situation, of course. So, but that's that's a good answer. I like that. Hey, Dave. Yeah, I'm sure you have some other questions. Throw something about regeneration. I'm sure you got some questions about regeneration. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, these guys are the they're real. These guys are busting my balls about this. I mean, the amount uh-huh. of emails that we receive about uh, possible regeneration, and you know, and this is the thing. This is what kills me. Um, I just said on the air, and I think um, I, I said this with uh, during one of my interviews with Dr. Wesley, I just kind of asked if, if that was a possibility, if that was something that Dr. Wesley might be thinking about. And all of a and sudden, I promise. yeah, yeah, all of a sudden, you know, Coburn <laughs> promised that we're going to have regeneration. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. So, okay. So, so throw us a couple more questions. Well, I think even yeah, without the loss. Dave, Dave, you can ask the question, but I can I can address that sort of generally as yeah. well. And and I think yeah. I, I, again the the simplicity of all this or the idea behind all this is it's taking information that we already have and just applying it a little bit differently. There have been countless studies on regeneration uh, with FUT. I think Sharon Keen uh, was doing that a long time ago and, and had that in the hair transplant textbook. 
There was a study um, in, in derm surgery in 2009 that some of the patients online have sort of alluded, alluded to where they just took 28 patients and took 100, uh, 100 hair follicles and just cut them in half. They were horizontally bisected and then they were implanted. And what they found was the top half um, would grow actually about 72% of the time and the bottom half would grow 70% of the time. And this information has been out there for a while. There just hasn't been a way of really applying it. And that, that was something mm. that was a, a, a very well-controlled study. And it's, it's, not, it's not anything that I invented. It's not anything that, that hasn't been done. There just hasn't been a great application for it. And this is something that, um, based on everything that's out there, and, and this is without any of the, the regenerative aids. This is without any PRP, without any A-cell, with any of the things that we're currently using to maybe stimulate that or give it a boost. This is just simply taking hair follicles and cutting them in half and then right. placing part in part. Uh, so all of that's already been demonstrated uh, time and time again, and this is just a different application uh, of, of doing that. So have we done it? No, because um, much of what we've been doing has been on uh, cadaveric tissue, and, and, and that's not going to, to regenerate. Um, and a lot, a lot of what Spencer and I have been talking about is, has been theory, but I can tell you in the conversation I've had with, had, had with different doctors that have done uh, regenerative work with ACEL, et cetera, et cetera, they, they nod their head and they don't see any reason why this wouldn't um, have that benefit. I think that's a great response, that Dave. Sense. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Um, fear loss, one of the members on the forum, uh, he asked this question first. He says, Artisa, the more I read into the science behind donor regeneration, the more excited I become about this treatment's potential. It seems Dr. Wesley's method could perfectly execute the process necessary for regeneration, according to research uh, report by Dr. Wesley. And then he, uh, he, he asks, I wonder how much A-cell could affect the results of that study as they were splitting hairs outside the body without any growth stimulant for the hairs after they were both placed into the scalp again. Yeah. And then furthermore, I wonder how leaving the top portion of the follicle in the scalp could affect those results. That was his question. Can you yeah, repeat I, that, please? I, <laughs> oh, which part? Dave, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. So I, I think that I think that um, yes, that <laughs> reader was was alluding to to the, the same study, which is great. I think how A cell can help. First of all, is it, it's the type of thing that if you're flushing, when, when you've done the harvest uh, under, underneath the skin surface and the scalp, you can flush the cavity with, with uh, saline diluted A-cell. And that's something that maybe that would minimize any scar tissue formation, which is a concern of a lot of people, and in addition to the, the regenerative effects it can have. But one of the things that's been um, a really pleasant um, realization of the, of the physicians in our field is the, the impact that A-cell has on minimizing scar tissue formation in FUT and FUE. Mm -hmm. So I don't see any reason why this also wouldn't apply to the pyloscopic approach um, in really minimizing any scar tissue formation between, beneath the skin surface in addition to um, the, the regenerative effect it would have. What I can say, again, this is, this is theory, but I don't think you need to be a doctor to, to imagine this. In, in a lot of the regenerative work that's been done with FUE, uh, with follicle transection, in those instances, you don't, you don't have the intact uh, surrounding tissue, the, the microenvironment that's so intact. When you're taking the hair from below, you're leaving the overlying skin surface. You're, you're leaving the surrounding dermis, the surrounding, surrounding subcutaneous tissue. You're leaving that surrounding milieu. And so I imagine that the likelihood of it being regenerated into its original form is probably greater than if you're than if you're pun punching out and leaving sort of an exposed surface where where um, things can sort of ooze out. The, the, I know with a lot of the the work with ACEL, it's sealed. You want to put on an occluding uh, layer to try and keep it in to, to maximize its effect. Well, this is the type of thing where you you have your built-in occluding layer, namely the skin surface, to do that. So again, it, we have not um, done it. Um, but it's just because we haven't we haven't gotten to a point where we we can do it. But when when that time comes, I I have confidence. I I, I am not going to stop Spencer from his bold claims because I don't think they're absurd <laughs> at all. I think that there's real. real I didn't uh, make those claims. 
Oh, yes, that's right. So, <laughs> Doc, you're going to get me in trouble here, man. Come on. My, my challenge with this regenerative uh, aspect of, of uh, using a cell is that there's no, there's no um, you know, general consensus throughout the field that there is a benefit to using a cell to begin with, not that I've seen. And what I'm actually seeing and, and what I have seen over the years uh, is that there, there tends to be a lot of debate as to, as to you know, even the, the most minuscule of effectiveness uh, at all. And so I, you know, I, I hear this and I, I've, I've always wanted to believe. I mean, I, I was one of the first, actually, I was the very first person to even contact a cell about its regenerative properties in regards to hair restoration. And I know that because Rodney Bosley, yes, that's his name, who was the, uh, the vice president of the, of the company at the time, I think now he's a CEO, he told me. So we never even considered that, that aspect of it because it was only for uh, the, the burn victim. And, uh, I, actually, and a couple I remember of, that. I remember yeah. you telling me about that. And, um, you know, my, my initial hopes for, uh, for A-cell had nothing to do with the, the regenerative aspect for, for the hair side of things. It was more in lines of uh, minimizing the appearance of, of donor scars from, from, uh, from FUT. And um, I, I remember this very well. Um, very early on, people started asking, well, if it can grow hair on a, on a dog's leg after it had been you know, through, through this trauma, then why can't it grow hair on a human head? And, um, and, and that's what started this whole thing. And I have yet to see anything that, that shows me. And, and call, call me the one pooping on the, you know, po- pooing on the, uh, on the, on the <laughs> idea of this. But I, I still haven't. In eight years that ACEL has been around, I have yet to see anything conclusive from anyone's mouth saying, absolutely, this works 100%. And so I think that before we can move on to say that it, it can work in this hypothetical scenario and that hypothetical scenario, we should consider the fact that all of ACEL is a hypothetical scenario to begin with. Well, you did, there are some doctors out there like Jeff Epstein who uh, was willing to go public with this and, and basically state that in his practice, he saw, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong if you, if you read this, but um, that he really saw, you know, little use for it. You know, he, re- he tried in his practice. He didn't see any significant improvement in the donor quality or the uh, uh, survival of grafts or the growth quality or, you know, didn't make the grafts grow in a more robust fashion. Yeah. And maybe that was just in his practice. And then you got guys like John Cole, who are, um, from what I understand, making different claims. I remember, well, and the thing is, I remember John Cole was staunchly against it in the beginning, and he, and he was having uh, debates with Jerry Cooley about this. I remember this very, very clearly. And he came across, I, I don't know what changed his mind, maybe he saw some, some data. Um, you know, I, I always, always like the tenacity that he goes after his beliefs. Um, but yeah, he has been making some claims over the past couple of years that, that have been supporting this. But I, I just, I, I have to bring this up because it's always an issue for me that there, there is no general consensus on, on the effectiveness to begin with. And then, and then there are these, all these other hypotheticals based on the original hypothetical. That, that's, that's fair. And I, I appreciate that. But whether yeah. or not ACEL contributes anything, we go back to the studies that are out just on trans, hair transection and and just the, what what they've been able to so even if ACL doesn't have any impact um, what one of the things that we'll do and we'll have a a database where we're always tweaking the depth of of where we clip the hair we'll may we'll be able to see when we when we trend closer to the skin surface or farther from the skin surface what depth of trend, what what depth of um, cut will lead to uh, if there is donor regeneration uh, maybe there's an ideal depth at which donor regeneration is maximized, and and so you, you, whether or not A cell works, it's an interesting discussion. But I don't think that that's that that's the most important question. Um, so the debate I agree with that. about A cell, but I don't necessarily think that I that, agree too. That everything hinges on on whether or not A cell does anything. Well, I, I don't think it's uh, that important when it comes to you know your work, and I, I think that the, the way I've seen that you've um, you've been documenting and and pushing forward with with the, um, for lack of a better, the mechanical aspect of, of your approach, I think that, you know, if anyone can get to the bottom of this and find any sort of definitive, um, uh, I, I don't want to say proof, but any sort, any sort of definitive evidence that there is something to this A-cell, if it's done right, to find that type of uh, environment in which uh, it's got the highest chance of, of doing anything 
that could be considered positive, I think it would be you. Oh, well, that, that's very, very nice of you to say, but I, I, it really is uh, more than one doctor that would be required, and it would be a database where we have, uh, we're pooling the findings of, of the, the different doctors that are starting to use this, where and you can actually tweak the, the I'm blushing right now, that was such, such a nice comment, but um, <laughs> the, where, <laughs> where, where you can actually tweak the depth of, of transaction by a quarter of a millimeter, and that's one of the things that will sort of pool, because there's different, there's different styles, I'm sure there'll be different techniques for doing pyloscopy, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get a general sense of, of um, what all the doctors are finding uh, well, with, to take, with to, their... To, to not take away from the, the, the main core of the conversation any further, but I will anyway, um, so I find that really interesting, but you know, the problem is that you know, when, when you're talking about multiple doctors, and you do have the multiple uh, ways that they're going to approach this, you know, one, one doctor is talking about, okay, if we go down 1.75 millimeters on, on this, this hair shaft, that's where the ideal area is for, for transection for, uh, for this to actually have an effect on regrowth and re regeneration. You know, hair, hair is different from one person to the next. And uh, the, the length of the hair shaft, the, the type of the hair shaft, I mean, there's so many different factors. I have a hard time seeing how this can be grouped into... Uh, um, uh, a definable type of presentation where someone can say, all right, we're dealing with this kind of hair, so we, we know that we need to go to this level before we start making our cut, if that makes yeah, any sense. I think, I think it's all about having a large enough N, having enough uh, follicles, because it's not just the, the depth of transection. It's the, the caliber of the coring device. It's, yeah. as you mentioned, the, the length of the hair follicle beneath the surface. It's um, the, there's it's the the what, what are some other ones that we can use? Uh, whether or not it's rotation, whether or not it's oscillation, mm -hmm. all all the different ways that we're doing the the cutting. So so I think w once you have a large enough N, you have enough subjects, and you start to to really see trends. It's the best you can do, and it is is really just get a sense of trends. And then every doctor will have their technique. Maybe there will be one one doctor that specializes in the regenerative aspect because he. Uh, he or she um, clips the hair at, at a deeper, far, a deeper level, mm -hmm. farther from the the skin surface. Whereas another doctor maximizes um, the, the survival of of his or her patient's hair follicles when they're transected because they go closer to the skin surface. And mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, it, it's you're right. We're never going to. And and that's the, everything in in hair transplantation is not based on a uh, definitive number. The, and, no. And look, you know, what, whatever it is, I think. Excuse me. I think that um, the fact that it's a, you know you guys are evolving this procedure and it, it, potentially there's going to be just uh, you know even greater options for people with hair loss. I mean, what else can you ask for, Joe? You know? Well, no, I no, I I get it, I get it, and and I I'm always going to be the the a cell skeptic just because I've I've been there from the beginning and I've seen so many. Uh, so many attempts at, at making claims, and there's also there's stuff. other extra cell, uh, extra extracellular matrix. Is that what yeah, it's called? yeah, well, that's the, part of it. Yeah, 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 and there's there's you know like like what Joe Greco is doing down in Sarasota, and he's basically utilizing the person's own blood to you know create this matrix. Yeah, and you know I've seen some really significant results coming out of uh, him and his brother's practice. That you know there's a lot of guys offering PRP and PRP with a cell and they're offering there's a guy in New York that's offering and you probably know who this guy is doc who's offering PRP and a cell for like $4,000 or 4,500 yeah. bucks a clip <laughs> yeah. you know and you know he's getting people to come in people are asking me about this doctor and about this procedure all the time the only results that I've ever seen as far as slowing the progression or reversing miniaturization and and again I, I don't work with this guy is from Joe Greco's office when you're actually seeing a woman's part go from a Ludwig three to a you know to a Ludwig one within a year just by having PRP, uh, that's pretty amazing to me. You know, without mm -hmm. having any other treatments. So I do think that there's something to it, for sure. And I think that this is all exciting stuff. But Joe, I get your point about the A cell. Yeah, you I mean, and, and and I apologize for going on the rant and for taking it taking to the to the out and left field, but it's just something that um, that's what you know, we do I, on this show. I, it is what we do. But I see I see things like this discussed so often 
uh, online, and I, I, I don't have the time or the energy to, to jump in, but I, I felt like it was necessary to have at least a, a, a point-counterpoint type of scenario with regards to that before we continue, because people people hear about a cell and they hear about it being used for this, that, or the other, and the assumption is already there that it's going to be effective just because it's a cell. Sure. Right. Sure. And so, so, so I felt like I need to put a, a bit of a dis- dissenting voice in there. And, that, and that's why that, 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 you know, specific doctor in that, that practice in New York is, in my view, um, able to really take advantage of that. Yeah. Because there's a lot of vulnerable guys out there who are willing. Listen, when you, if you think about it, if you promise that you're going to stop the progression of your hair loss or reverse it with a simple procedure that's only going to cost you 4500 bucks, And I you think, know, the, go ahead. I was, I was going to say the early use of A-cell is really amazing prior to them trying it out with hair. You, oh, yeah. You've seen oh, the early. Wait, listen, and that's the thing. It has all the pieces of the puzzle to kind of create a uh, an environment where people could be taken advantage of. Are, are you talking about the veterinarian sure. results, uh, Dave? Uh, actually, they've used it for. Um, uh, there's always that one. There's always that one guy who grew his pinky back. You know, that's that's the thing that everyone <laughs> always, yeah, but, always sees. And, and, and my 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 rebuttal on that is that that happens without a cell naturally. If it's if it's right above the the first joint or the uh, the first joint behind the fingernail, that can actually happen without a cell. And it's documented, and that's regenerate the finger. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, listen, we, we're we're definitely we're going uh, off the rails here, uh, Dave. If you oh, have any more true. questions, I, I want to kind of end this segment. We've had Dr. Wesley on the air for about an hour, so I'm yeah, sure I'm sure he's true. got things to do. And my, my dog is getting anxious. She wants to be fed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you pretty much and you pretty much covered everything everybody has asked on the forum. So uh, I think we're pretty much done with the the questions. All right, Artista, man, I appreciate the call. You feel Thanks free. For in. Feel free to. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you want to hold on, but we're going to take a break. Uh, Doctor Wesley, is there anything that you want to add for those guys who are really anxious out there? I mean, I think that you obviously you know, gave them as much information as you can at this point. And, you know, I guess, you know, some of the questions that may not have been asked, uh, that I, maybe they were, I, don't, I just don't remember, uh, everyone's asking about the price. I'm, I'm assuming that that's something that you really can't know at this point. Yeah, right. and it's not that I don't want to answer that question. I, 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 I just, it's not really something that we have, have discussed in any great de- detail. And, yeah, I, I imagine that. it will be very similar to, to FUE. Right. Um, and and then as as it becomes more widespread, the, the price will sort of follow the same path as FUE, where one doctor is doing it, and then as more do it, they, they charge. Oh, it's, a different it, rate. It, basically, it's going to be whatever the market will bear. That's the way you know hair transplantation and cosmetic surgery is in general. But I, I think FUE is a pretty a pretty good model to to base your assumption on, just just because it's so similar. Okay. So I, as far as the price goes, that, that's really the best answer I can give because that's the extent of my knowledge of that. A, a couple of things that I that I was sort of, well, I, I guess to to speak to the to the anxious uh, listener about what what's being done and when is it going to be ready. I, I, I think ho- hopefully tonight it's sort of started to shed light on what's taking so long, and and I, I really can't emphasize enough that our our team every day is is working on. On improving this and developing this, and one of the questions I sort of anticipated but haven't heard, although it's probably on some people's minds after seeing that recent video, is how much damage is it going to do beneath the skin surface? And um, the video that I had up there of the the inverted cadaver tissue and that big, that big three pronged device tearing it up, that was back in 2009. That. And and, and um, since then, a lot of what we've been doing is is um, we we make little silicon. Uh, uh, gel models, and and we're we tried out a whole bunch of different punches and whole a whole bunch of different clipping devices uh, to really uh, get a sense of what uh, what how much damage it does under the skin surface. And the model that we designed that we're using now does it has the exact and I can I can track this down and post this. It has the exact same amount of um, missing tissue, uh, if, if you want to call it that, right. as a as a 0.9 millimeter FUE punch. It looks exactly the same as as the mm-hmm. FUE punch. Uh, however, the skin surface is, in, is the overlying skin surface is intact. So that's that's one of the, the little studies that we've done along the way that are all internal because we need to know this before we're moving forward with it. So 
Um, it, even though there haven't been these big, bold publications throughout, we're con- constantly doing uh, internal studies to make sure that it's safe and effective and something that, that is going to be usable for every practitioner. The ergonomics of the device, we're always trying trying different uh, um, iterations of the device different to give it a different feel. What what works best? What has the the which is the easiest to use? Which is the most comfortable for any repetition? Different uh, visualization components. We're always trying those out. Storage vials, seeing what is um, the the easiest to use, best for seeing the graphs when they come out. The path of transport of the graft once it comes out of the scalp. Um, doing all these different tests to see what the safest and and, and least disruptive path of transport. Well, I, so, what I do think is really interesting is that you kind of have this reverse suction. Basically, it's just uh, the suction is, is created by the saline uh, flowing, right. through th- th- uh, flowing through the tube as opposed to mm-hmm. uh, an air suction device. Thank God. Oh, that's, that's, not... that's essential. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's very, very important. And, um, and that's, that's one of the... I don't think a lot of guys yeah. really understand the or appreciate the magnitude of that, you know, uh, of, of kind of utilizing that type of suction as opposed to uh, the typical stuff that we see with like a, a device like the Neograft, where you're, you're basically bathing, continuing to bathe the tissue in, uh, in saline as opposed to possibly desiccating the tissue with air. Yeah, it's it's important, and and um, all of those things are being tested. I actually, I, I really don't mind, and 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 I have to say, I welcome the the questions and concerns from doctors and and uh, and listeners and and viewers on the the blogs because all of these are important questions, and and um, and well, they're I, questions that I, we've been answering along the way. I think the questions from physicians just need to be, um, you know, if they're going to be put out there for public consumption, I think that the physicians need to be civil. That's all. That's all I ask. Oh, yeah, yeah. True. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 that would be nice, but it would also be unexpected. <laughs> what, what, what I can say is the, the, the physicians with whom I've spoken in person and presented this, um, they've been so excited. And, and a couple of them have, have said, oh, you know, I thought about this years ago. I just didn't know a way of doing it. And, and, and they, when they see it and, and the, the details are, are demonstrated to them and shown, it, it, it's been really fun seeing their reaction and now now it's not so private anymore it's pretty well known right um but it's it's even even this uh maybe three months ago i spoke with a really well-respected doctor and in new york sat down with him and showed him an update and and he was he was a huge skeptic uh prior to that and just and 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 showing showing him um what we're getting and doing and 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 it's addressed a lot of the questions that he had. What about splayed grafts? What about the three-haired follicle mm-hmm. that has its bulbs sort of flying aside? Well, it, it, those, we're capturing those. How we're capturing them? I mean, I have some thoughts. I think that the, the suction aspect... The suction, I yeah. I was going to say suction. All, the, dull, those, the dull punch and the suction. Yeah, those, those are helping. And it, and it's, but it's not just that. A lot of it is engineering feats where you have to, when, with the punch itself, has to, has to be encased in a way to optimize that because it wasn't always working like that and now that they've done these these tweaks it is and so and a lot of it i don't even know why why it's working that way but it is and so <laughs> we're happy with that and we'll see the next question so. we'll, we'll just accept that and move cool. on yeah. yeah so so one one question i have is um when you're when you're using this the scope as it were to to go into the the underlying tissue and i assume this is um this is not going below the gallia it's not going below the gallia. Uh, now, that okay. was one of the things that we initially were going to do is going to be a, a subgallial approach. But the problem with that is since you're since you're approaching a hair follicle that's on the skin surface and your alignment is based on that follicle, when you're coming from the gallia, there's so there's so much tissue that that is getting uh, that is altering sort of the the path of of movement of the uh, underlying punch that it, it starts to throw off the alignment. I'd say tension so as well, because because it's just more pressure the the deeper you go. Um, well, guys, my, listen, Joe. I, I know you got a lot of questions, but before, sorry, I, I actually have to go to a, a hard break. Uh, Doctor Wesley, is there anything you want to add before we we uh, we close up shop and, here for this? And this I'd like segment. to say one thing to Doctor Wesley too. <laughs> okay, real quick. Sure, sure. Well, Doctor Wesley, sure. you do know that we have a meeting set for next month, right? Yes, I know. I saw it on the schedule. I'm very excited. Yeah, Doc, if I were you, I, w- I would bring security. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not from Staten, okay? <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, yeah, Dr. Really we're looking forward to it, Dr. Wesley. Well, and you know, right, I, I, right. I, I think a lot of the guys in the forum are looking forward to it as well. So yeah, I, I, and um, I am still interested in face testing. If uh, you still want to add me into it, I'm there. Yeah, I, I, I think that sounds great. We, we, we have had over 1,000 people uh, sign up for the trials, but, but initially what we'll do is we'll, we'll take a small number of people that, that um, are the, the best candidates in terms of simplicity. I mean, initially, and this is sort of opening up a whole other can of worms, but we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll start with people that are willing to shave their heads, even though ultimately we, don't need, we may not need to shave heads. Um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge actually pretty soon. We'll start reaching out to people that seem like good candidates, but, but, um, yeah, I remember the conversation we had some months ago. (laughs) Yeah. All right, guys, listen, I got, I got, I got to get out of here. Um, uh, Dr. Wesley, thank you so much for joining us. tonight. I think you answered a lot of questions and hopefully the emails will stop at least for a month or so. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, right. you know, give, give it a little, I, little I, I, I don't mind them. Well, they're, they're Yeah, you can email Doctor Wesley, but just do me a favor, man. I made no promises. I know nothing about regeneration. Uh, obviously, we're hoping that, uh, like Doctor Wesley said, that that's a possible end game. But who knows? We have no idea at this point. Well, what we've seen is anecdotal, but very positive looking. Right, and if it doesn't work, it's all on Spencer. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all his fault. <laughs> All right, guys. Listen, Dr. Wesley, I'll let you go. Go walk your dog, do whatever you have to do. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, and then we'll, right. we'll talk soon. Great talking to you, Thank Dr. Wesley. Have a good night, everyone. All right. You take care. Hey, take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Guys, I have to take a break. 888-659-3727. That's 888-659-3727. Uh, I'm Spencer Coburn. You're listening to and watching The Ball Truth. Stay with us. The winner of seven prestigious Golden Forehead Awards. My family's always arguing. It always starts off innocent, and then it gets vicious right away. So I was like, hey, looks like you're losing some hair. At least my wife's not a whore. Spencer David Coburn. Hey, guys, welcome back. Um, You know what? We have about, we actually have to leave early tonight. I just spit all over my microphone. Apparently, Andrew Zarian has something that needs to be uh, done in his studio. Uh, he's going to be on some other uh, some other show, and he needs actually uh, to put this on the stream. So uh, we got to cut our show short. No choice in the matter. Hey, Joe, you there? Hey, yeah. <laughs> we got to cut our show short. But listen, I want to thank uh, Dr. Wesley for joining us tonight. I think he did a great job, uh, you know, explaining exactly what's going on with his technique. There's a lot of, you know, uh, anticipation. A lot of people are very excited. But the truth is, it's still in its relative infancy. I mean, he's obviously come a long way, but it is not yet ready for prime time. And I think that's really important that all of you guys out there who are putting your lives on hold, waiting for um, this procedure to be available... It, you know, I mean, life is short. Who knows what's going to happen? So far, so good. We'll keep our fingers crossed. But, you know, we, we just really don't know. And this is not that I'm not confident in what Dr. Wesley is doing because you guys know that I am. But, you know, who knows when he's going to be ready? Who knows when he's going to be able to offer entire procedures with this technique? It could be years. You know, he did say that he's hopefully going to be able to offer smaller uh, test procedures, uh, maybe at the end of this year or early 2016, and we'll see. But I'm glad you took this opportunity to come on and answer some of your questions. Joe, I'm going to, um, I'll take a call for like five minutes, and let's see who this That's cool. is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this, and where are you calling from? It's Dave Artista again. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hey, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted me to stay on. <laughs> uh, hold on for a second. Let me take another call. I'll put you on hold. I'll, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll keep you potted sure. up. Oh, I just hung up on somebody. Okay, let's see who this is. <laughs> hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Hello? Yes, hi. No way. This is great. What's happening, uh, man? I'm Dan. Hey, I'm Dan. I'm from uh, Boise, Idaho. Hi, Dan. Welcome to the show. Hey, Dan. Listen, honestly, I would normally, you know, tell you that you have all the time in the world. But we got about 10 minutes. So tell me what's up. Sure. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I was just so stoked I won. That's great. Uh, anyway. Well, so are we, man. Welcome. Losing my hair. 
um, as as that goes for a lot of people on the show. I'm 28. Okay. Um, mostly in the crown, I have male pattern. All right. And uh, they just got a neograph clinic here in town, and I know you're kind of skeptical about those, and I kind of am too, because they do. They just bring in techs. That's exactly they, well. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what they do. And tell me, okay, so they just got a neograft clinic. What does that mean to you? Well, it means that I wouldn't have to fly anywhere, and I could maybe afford to cover up the area that um, it doesn't have hair right now, which is the back of my head. I mean, it's not so bad. I put, like, kabuki on it, and uh, no one knows that I'm losing my hair. But I'd like it that if I could. I'm a pretty active guy. and uh, well, I'll, t- I'll like tell you what. You know, we actually we no, just, we just lost our Internet connection, but you and I can speak. And uh, Joe Tillman, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yeah. I don't don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's on our end or on Andrew's end, but it says that uh, that connection has gone offline. Uh, Let me see if I could somehow reconnect with him. We'll see. But anyway, let me answer your question. We're recording this anyway. Um, Listen, it's great that you have something, a facility that's close to you. It's great that, uh, you know, uh, more... There's more options for people who are suffering with hair loss out there. Uh, but in my view, um, a neograft is just a tool. And you really, you know, it, the way that it's being presented to the public, it's kind of like a turnkey. I have to call this guy back. Sorry, man. Got technical problems. It's really more of a turnkey solution for um you know, cosmetic surgeons or people who have never even considered getting involved in cosmetic surgery just kind of want to open up a, uh, a turnkey hair transplant shop. Uh, my advice is to really do your research before you consider having surgical hair restoration of any kind. It's not about the neograft versus other devices. It's about whose hand is the neograft in. And I'm so sorry. Andrew Zarian is like texting me. It's a whole thing happening here. Um, but it's really about who is um, performing the surgery. And yes, um, in most cases, when, once a neograft is sold to a physician or to a clinic, um, really the, what they do is they kind of have these roving band of techs that go around the country. And if that clinic can book a case, then you know the techs are called in. They perform the majority of the case. Uh, the physician, if there is a physician on premises, uh, may actually just be a kind of observing the case. And in the end, your uh, appearance, your cosmetic result, and your life is in the hands of, uh, you know, technicians who may or may not have the experience uh, to perform the surgery, who may be hung over from the night before, who may be pissed off at their boyfriend. They're not really concentrating on, on you know, your procedure. Jet lagged. Uh, jet lagged. I, I personally think it's a really bad idea, and I have seen some horrendous outcomes based on this business model. Now, it's not because of the neograft. The neograft is really just kind of like a, uh, you know, a handheld uh, motorized punch with a suction device. A lot of the guys in the industry who are utilizing the neograft, who are really good at what they do, uh, usually kind of don't use it straight out of the box. They uh, disassemble the suction device, and they just use it as a handheld uh, uh, or motorized punch. So to answer your question, if a company just popped up in your area that's offering the neograft, that's probably a company that you want to avoid. Not to mention, um, well, if, if you have access to their before and after pictures, like if they have a website up and they and they have a gallery of, of the of the images of results that they've done, you can you can copy the image URL for for each image shown, plug it into Google, and you can do a search on that image and see how many other clinics around the country also are using the exact same image. Yeah, that's a, that's actually a really good. Point. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Well, they they opened it in uh, July, and I actually met a guy that had it done. Um, six months ago, and he looked pretty good. My my main concern, well, a I guess I was wanting to talk to someone that knows more about the progression of hair loss because I just talked to a sales rep, and they didn't seem. I feel like I'm more knowledgeable than they are. Right. And, well, that's that's uh, red, that's I, red flag like number I, one. Sure. Yeah. But if if I fill in my hairline, am I just going to hate myself in ten years, five years, when yeah. you know the rest of my stuff's not looking so good? I've tried finasteride. I'm always kind of back and forth with it because I do have side effects. They're not unbearable, but they're definitely there. 
And so, I mean, I, I know you're a big proponent of that if it works for you. Um, I, I suppose ideally, Finasteride would work for me, and then I'd have a hair surgery, and then I'm just good to go. How bad does your hair loss bother you? I mean, is it something that you obsess about every day? You can't stop looking at yourself in the mirror or reflection in windows, or is it something that you could, uh, if you if you had if you had to, you could just kind of accept it and move on? <laughs> I uh, it bugs me. I mean, it's like it's just mostly on my crown, like I said, and then my hairline's not super noticeable yet. But yeah, I'm I'm always kind of embarrassed of it, you know. Yeah. I'm sure I'd look fine. I'm pretty fit. You know, I'd probably look fine bald. But, you know, of course, I'd love to keep it if I can. And I feel like I'm kind of at a tipping point where it's going to start being obvious. Be- before you go on, guys, um, we're going to have to cut the stream off. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue. Whatever calls are on the line, we're recording. So this uh, recording will go up online. Um, Andrew's going to actually cut off the stream. We've had some problems anyway. So I'm going to continue with this phone call. There's another couple of calls on the line. And, guys, if you want to call in who are watching the stream, uh, we'll be taking calls for about another 20 minutes. So the phone number, of course, is 888-659-3727. Or you can watch Andrew Zarian do whatever uh, unimpor- <laughs> unimportant thing that he has to do online. Uh, the, the selfish thing that he's got to do online. The too. selfish thing that he has to do online. <laughs> All right, Andrew, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut ties with you right now. Goodbye. Okay, so go ahead, man. So, so finish your thought. Well, I, I was going to. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I was going to say that if if you if you're in a position where you know it's it's not devastating to you on a daily basis, then you know you, you got to understand that the hair transplant isn't going to stop your hair from continuing to fall out. It's just going to fill in what's already been lost. And so, no matter what procedure you get, be it an FUE or or FUT, uh, once it's done, it's done, and the chance for needing more work will increase significantly with um, you know, you know, the, the less you do for on the prevention side, right? So f- before you make any decision about surgery, you have to find a balance, something that will help you to prevent further loss because if you don't, then you pr- my opinion, you probably shouldn't have it to begin with because it's just putting you on a guaranteed um, – merry-go-round of continued surgeries. And it doesn't matter what type of surgery you have. I don't care. Listen, yeah. the Neograft or any of these devices, they're promoted as kind of relatively non-invasive um, surgical procedures. Uh, you go in, you basically have no downtime, which is not necessarily true. It's definitely a lot less invasive than having a strip uh, for sure. But you know, the bottom line is the results. Are you going to uh, suffer with um, potential shock telogen effluvium or shock loss? Are you going to look, end up looking worse in a month or two after the procedure than you did before the procedure? Meaning, are you going to lose more hair and you're going to have to live with that for a year? That's always a possibility. And if that happens, could you deal with that possibility? You know, these are all things that the salesman at the clinic is not going to discuss with you. And if do they, you have the right. finances to continue this to begin with? Right. Because, you know, each, each time in the chair, it's what, seven to 10 grand. That's a lot of money. So it's it's five bucks a hair, and you, maybe you know if that's a good price point or not. It's, if it's five, five, bu- five if it's bucks. five bucks a hair, that's a bad price point. If it's five bucks a graft, that's then, pretty good. Then that's pretty good. Sorry, so, five bucks a, five bucks a graft. Yeah, then that that's pretty good. But it also, in my view, it kind of speaks to the level of expertise that you're dealing with because if they're willing to uh, provide you with, um, especially when it's not on a, on a sliding scale straight five bucks a graft neograft procedure, then these guys are trying to kind of, you know, provide a an attractive price as well. So yeah. mm-hmm. listen, man, this is my advice. I don't know who you did you did not name these people. You don't have to name these people. I can guarantee you these would be this would be a company that we would not recommend through the IHRS or through the American Hair Loss Association or through this broadcast. My advice is to really uh, do your research. You can go to our website. You can go to our forum if you want, which is baldtruthtalk.com, um, and kind of ask around, get an idea of what's happening, look at the before and after pictures. But the truth is um, you're relatively young. It doesn't sound like your hair loss has progressed to a point where it's really affecting your life that much. I mean, I may be wrong. But, you know, if you can deal with what you have right now, um, I would consider maybe – you know, uh, talking to your doctor about maybe lowering your dose of finasteride, seeing if you can tolerate that. 
Um, did you just go straight on one milligram, or and or and, and you had problems, or were you uh, trying to taper your dosage or lower your dosage at any point? Well, honestly, I'm kind of um, sorry to answer your question. I was doing 0.25 milligrams for a while unknowingly because my doctor prescribed it wrong. And I did that for about six months, but I didn't notice much. And I don't even know if that would make a difference. I don't know if you know if it would. It, well, it seemed like it kind of did. A lot of people do take uh, 0.25 milligrams. You know, the, the prescribed amount, basically you were taking a half of finasteride ta tablets, right? A half of, of five milligrams. Well, what she, I think she meant to prescri prescribe me Proscar, five milligram, but she prescribed me one milligram finasteride and told me to dice it. And then after yeah. about oh, months, really? I was like, I think I'm only taking a quarter of a milligram here. And she's like, oh, my bad. And then she... And then she <laughs> the, the wow. <laughs> well, you know what? That's not the end of the world because at least you started with a small dose. Well, now, when you were on that small dose, were you having any adverse side effects? Uh, like a little. I, you know, my, my libido was definitely like a little down. Now, Nothing did you, like were crazy. You, but, you were know, you I, super aware of and hyper-concerned about the potential of side effects? Or did you just go in thinking that you weren't going to have any side effects. You know, Spencer, if I, if I hadn't read anything online, I wonder how different it would be. Yeah, me too. Uh, because everything so freaks you out on there, you know. It, it's all in your mm -hmm. it, listen, Sex sex for the most no. part is sex for the most part is in in a guy's mind and and women. So, I, the very thought of the potential of feeling you know, uh, having a little less feeling, maybe a little, slightly lower libido, anytime you have an ache or a pain, you're going to think about it. Anytime uh, you have sex or, you know, whether it's with somebody else or, or alone, you're going to be thinking about that, and that will affect your performance. That's just the way that it is. So, you know, I always say this, and you've probably heard me say this on the program before, but, you know, years ago, before a lot of the stuff came out online, you rarely heard from anyone who suffered these adverse side effects, you know, especially when they stopped using the medication. That was unheard of. And then it wasn't until about 2005, 2006 that, you know, a few very vocal people came online and kind of created this, um, you know, tsunami, uh, so to speak. And a lot of people, man, you know, as soon as you look up Finasteride, that's what you see. So I get it, you know. And to tell you the truth, and I say this all the time, if I were to start today and I looked it up online, I probably would not have taken the drug and I would not have had the benefits that I've had for the last 20 years. You yeah. know, if this information was out there available 20 years ago, or whether it's, you know, um, just some hype or uh, fear mongering, whatever it is, and, and I'm sure there's some reality to it as well. But if there's this, you know, this mass hysteria, if, if it was there 20 years ago, I would never have written my book. I wouldn't be behind this mic. I wouldn't have the hair that I have on my head. And I wouldn't have lived the life that I've, that I've lived. So, Spencer, so you haven't done any surgical. You've just taken this finasteride I've, for 20 years. That's it. I've been taking finasteride for 20 years. I paint uh, the back of my head. I basically use something called Derm Match. I blow dry my hair. Like, it's insane what I have to do to make it look, you know, the way that I make it look. But the truth is, I'm, I'm about to be 50 years old, you know. And the fact is, I feel pretty damn lucky that I've been able to save as much hair as I have for so many years. The, the older yeah. you and I get, the, 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 the more hair we have compared to our peers. That's right. The I love it. The older we yeah. get, the better we yeah. look. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, listen, okay. our, our advice, I think, is pretty solid, man. Don't jump into it. I mean, just because you, you think you would yeah. feel better with some more hair in your head, it doesn't mean that surgery is the way to go. Surgery should always be your last resort. But in my view, from just from what you're describing, this is probably not the company you want to go to. Okay. So I guess a parting point, I want to do what I can to keep what I've got, and that would be finasteride or minoxidil. Um, I don't, I'm not super keen on putting, you know, minoxidil on my hair in the morning and then doing my hair and then putting kabuki in it, you know, and yeah. then putting minoxidil at the end of the day. I'm not, a, like I'm not a fan of, of that either. Is there, is there other options? Are those the only two really that are proven to help me out there? Uh, they are the only two to pro that are proven to help you out in that respect as far as slowing or stopping the progression. I have, I've always believed, and I'm not a physician, that minoxidil is kind of like a Band-Aid. And, you know, a lot of people, they kind of, they're, they're prescribed both medications or they're told to use both medications simultaneously. But the problem is you really don't know what's working for you. I'm a big believer in the, 
you know, in the positive effects of financial drive because of my personal experience and the experience of, you know, many countless people have contacted us over the years. Um, minoxidil is a pain in the ass to use. Period. It really is. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. No, I actually take I, my my belief is that it go it does go beyond the the medication. Uh, finasteride, uh, Propecia Proscar. I do believe that there is a nutrition element to it. I do believe that there's a lifestyle element to it. Uh, and there are some other other things you can do. Like I, I'm a believer in ketoconazole-based shampoos. Yeah. Uh, like Nizoral that has in some studies shown to be as effective as 2% minoxidil. Um, I use that on, on, on a regular basis. Um, I avoid sugar as much as possible. I try to I try to be organic in the foods I eat. Um, you know, it it, it it gets more involved. Uh, some people don't like to 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 go down that route, um, but it it is what, what I do. What was that and, and I th- Nizoral, or any any so. sham any shampoo with ketoconazole two percent or even one percent. But listen, you know, I, again, my advice, and I really want want you to, to to take this advice because it's 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 solid, you know, advice from years of experience. You're not ready for surgery, man. And from what yeah. you're telling me, the company that you've had a consultation with might not be ready for surgery themselves. Yeah, you know, that's what I wanted well you said. to say. I just needed to hear you say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, listen, um, listen. And good luck. And that sales lady was pushy too, man. I, was, I emailed her my concerns, and she was like, you know, the what longer you wait, the more hair you lose, and the more it's going to cost you. And I'm just like, oh god, oh, god. that that is another red flag, man. Yeah, that that, that is one of the worst consultant moves. And I've heard that before. I mean, it's like they they put the fear of God in you, man. You you know what? Yeah. Surgery is always going to be there. It's always yeah. going to be okay. there, and you know what well, you want. They, you want they, to go to a real take, surgeon. Okay. Well, say, say I take finasteride for a year or two, and I'm having really positive effects, and I just want to fill in the gaps. I mean, it, I'm comfortable saying that I could take this for the next twenty years. Then it's a better idea. Absolutely. Maybe well, I'm thirty now. Absolutely. Listen, you know, the longer you wait, the better. If you're able to maintain the hair that you have, and you feel like you have stabilized your hair loss. It, once you go to a real professional who can, you know, check you out using a densitometer or another similar device to check out your miniaturization under magnification, you know, you didn't even have a doctor's visit. You just you just sat down with a salesperson. You know, then you, you know, could, edited, th- yeah. then you could you could approach the subject again, but you need to speak to a professional. Yeah. Okay. Well, well said. Well said. All right, man. Listen. Good luck to you. you no, know, I I uh, I can't tell you how much I was. So pleased when I found your blog. Just a bunch of guys as miserable as me about their hair, and, and it's really great to have an outlet like that. So thanks for taking the time to talk to me, and thanks for the advice, man. I appreciate it. You got it, man. Take yeah, care. Thanks for the call. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, that's what we are, man. We're a miserable bunch of guys. I love it. <laughs> All right, we got some more. We got some more calls. Again, we're, the stream is not live, but I'm recording this, so uh, you guys who are uh, listening, I guess you're not listening live, but. You know, I will take, I will take, I think Dave Ortiz had just hung up. Dave, I would have spoken to you, man. All right, let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? It's me. I didn't hang up. <laughs> oh, hey, Dave. So, someone, someone else hung up. You lost connection. All right, so let me see. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pot you up. You could always interject if you want. Uh, that means okay. that you're live. So hold on. All righty. Hey, who's this? Where are you calling from? Hey, you're on the air. Doug from Chicago. Doug from Chicago. Welcome. What can we do for you, man? Hello, Doug. Good. How are you? I guys? love Chicago. <laughs> we're we're good. Yeah. I mean, our artist is from Chicago too. Yes, oh, I am. Uh, I'm in Oak Park. I don't know if you know that area. Yes, I do. Of course. Home of uh, Hemingway and Frank Lloyd Wright. <laughs> well, I know. I know exactly where that is. So, what can I do for you, man? Um. I just wanted to call and thank you guys. You guys kind of saved me from making a bad decision about a year ago. Uh, I called, and you and Joe Tillman um, advised me not to get a hair transplant. And not to sound obnoxious, but I think uh, Joe Tillman referenced me on a show later. Um, I don't know if Joe remembers this. I'm the guy that sent him uh, images and uh, a doctor said I needed 4,000 grafts, and Joe wrote me back and said I had a crazy uh, full head of hair, and where would the grafts go? 
<laughs> and uh, I, I, th- I think I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I was the hockey player guy with the black hair. Uh, we. Oh yeah, I remember you now. Yeah. And so, uh, I did get the hair transplant. Thankfully, um, I don't know why the doctor thought I need. I was a doctor in Turkey. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why he thought I needed four thousand grafts, but. Well, I mean, listen. I will say. I will say this. Uh, we recommend two doctors in Turkey because they have, you know, their their clinics have consistent results. But it doesn't necessarily mean. I'm not sure who who you're referring to, but it doesn't necessarily mean that um, these guys aren't going to try to get at the at least at the very least try to get you to be interested in as many grafts as possible. What usually ends up happening, especially if you don't really need it, is once you go there you may end up being disappointed because they're going to say, well, you know what, you really only need 2,500 graphs and you're not a candidate for 4,000 graphs. But sometimes if there's a salesman involved or if there's some sort of, you know, um, you know, in between, you know, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for, Joe? Um, intermediate. Involved. Intermediate. Yeah. yeah intermediary. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Um, you sometimes the information cannot be completely accurate. So I always tell people, even, if, even in the best hands, no matter who you're going to, and I don't even know who your doctor, who, who this doctor was, um, always get as many consultations as possible. And you eventually figure out, you know, especially if there's several doctors or a couple of doctors or clinics that are kind of giving you uh, similar advice, those are the guys you should probably narrow down, uh, uh, you know, to c- considering. But I'm glad you didn't have surgery, man, because I always say surgery is, surgery is a last resort. And, and you know what? Um, I don't know if you guys uh, follow hockey. There was a hockey player named Jose Theodore. Uh, I'm not. I'm not a big TV. hockey fan. Yeah, it's you know it's hard to see the puck on TV. Right. On people. <laughs> <laughs> well, it... Remember Fox News? They they I don't know the guy if you remember this. They put like a laser uh, light. Yeah. Yeah, they, the they put a, a highlight on the on fall around the, the puck. Yeah, the Can- Canadians laugh at Americans for that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this goalie, this guy Jose Theodore, had a full head of hair, and as a preventative measure, uh, this was back in like '99. He uh, he started taking Propecia, and he actually got um, suspended from the league for a couple days because they thought it showed up as a. a a drug, I guess, a steroid, possibly when they did a drug test on them. What what it what it does is um, in sports organizations they'll they'll they ban the use of finasteride, like in in the Olympics, because what it does is it masks the use of performance enhancers. It does okay, it doesn't make it look like they're taking it. It just looks like they might be masking the use of of uh, of these products. And so okay. so if you so if you're if if it's found in your system then they can't really say one way or the other whether they're using something, performance-enhancing medications. So they, they suspend you for a few days so they can uh, clear your system, and then they retest you. And for, for a while, it was actually banned by, um, by – well, I don't think it's banned in the Olympics anymore. It, 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 it was as of, uh, I think, 2010, the Winter Olympics here in, in Vancouver. I think it was banned. Interesting. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I, I thought that was the case because I thought I, I thought I remembered a. Um, I thought the ban a, was lifted actually. A, a luge guy, or maybe a downhill skier, was was. Uh, yeah, it was, was a luge guy. It was a luge guy. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Well, anyway, man, listen, we we, we I appreciate the call, and I'm glad that Joe was able to uh, you know save your ass there. If you're happy with yeah. that decision, then yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, you know like Spencer always says, it's it's always last resort to have surgery, and and. Um, yeah, I, I hope that it's been a positive decision for you. You know what made, made me, I'm 40 years old, and I've been taking Propecia, uh, you know, before I even, uh, you know, I thought I had minimal hair loss. I started taking it in 99, and, um, it, you know, it's saved my hair, and I've had no side effects, and that's not to, uh, you know, insult any of the guys that do suffer side effects because, you know, I have empathy for them, you know, if, if they think they're having side effects. Of course. Uh, you know, maybe they are, and that's too bad. But uh, for certain things, certain things work for certain people. But for me, it, it, uh, it saved my hair, and um, 
I guess it saved me uh, a couple of grand from uh, having surgery. More than a couple. More than a couple, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I if congratu- you congratulations. For, uh, I thank you guys for uh, all the... Uh, and you guys really do a, uh, a selfless deed. Uh, you really do help guys out uh, more than just with hair. Uh, you know, you really help guys out with their lives. And I hear the listeners and how... Um, you know, how you just uplift them and, and guide them in the right direction. And that's rare in today's world to get an unbiased, uh, you know, positive uh, advice. That's very rare. So thank you again, uh, all three of you, actually. Well, I, I appreciate you saying that. And you can go, tell that to a couple of the uh, detractors online, will you? Because those, those I really guys. don't go online. I'm thinking about pawning my computer. And you know, getting, uh, good, blades. good. You stay know off. what, dude? Stay <laughs> off, man. You're be- you're better off. You're better. I'm not off. a computer guy. I grew up Probably in so. the, uh, thankfully, in the '70s and '80s when uh, all these gadgets didn't exist yet. So. Yeah, well, I grew up in the dark ages. I mean, you what? You said you're 40. 41. 41. I'm almost 50. So I get it, man. Believe me, I just want to get myself. I want to join AARP. Get myself one of those jitterbug phones. <laughs> you know, just for emergencies. And I want one of those motorized the scooters. Times, they, uh, I advertise for that phone. Yeah, yeah, and just cut the cord, man. Just get the fuck out. Maybe change my name so no one bothers me. <laughs> I'm actually getting mail from AARP now. I don't know why. That's what happens, man. You're going to get your Social Security information in, in, in about a year, and uh-huh. uh, that's it. Then AARP starts to, to, starts to hound you. And then the old folk uh, home uh, mail is going to start to come soon. Look, don't in, five, think, I'm, in five years, I'm, st- I'm not going to walk anymore. I'm just going to have one of those motorized wheelchairs that I can run, run around the sidewalks and terrorize people with. Dude, there's a, a guy, oh, that actually stu- guy that actually stopped me on, uh, in a mall in a jazz. He was a fan of the show. And I'm, I'm sitting there with Common Law having a Starbucks, and this guy starts circling us in his jazzy, man. And he's like, he's like are you Spencer K.? And I'm like, oh Jesus! <laughs> yeah, but he was actually he was actually a really nice guy. But anyway, listen, I I, I I'm going to take one more phone call, dude. I really appreciate you calling. I'm glad that we were able to help you. And yeah. you, I think you're doing the right thing for yourself, man. You're 41 years old. You saved you saved a lot of your hair. You said you have no adverse side effects from finasteride. Go live your life, man. Take that money and go go have a nice vacation. There's exactly. a lot of life to live, and. Uh... Well said. You know, a computer is not. Computers are good for certain things, but it's not a place to live life. For I me, I, ab- I absolutely agree. They're good for what, like porn and what else? Um, well, <laughs> porn, uh, mail order brides <laughs> no from Korea. Mail order brides from Korea. I like that, dude. I'm telling you, man. Especially if you, I tell all the guys, especially older guys, if they're divorced, whatever it is, just get get yourself a mail order bride and call it a day. I don't need American girls. I need a Korean girl. Uh, American girls are too. They're not old fashioned. Well, let me tell you something. One day we'll have an entire show about that because I am with you, my man. <laughs> I lucked out. I have a I have a great woman. I she's basically and I and I've said this. Uh, I, I call her like the co-author of my life because I've, I've been with her for 15 years. She's an incredible person, very unique individual. I don't think. I mean, they broke the mold with her. I do not think I'll ever find anybody like her again. So if she happens to leave me or God forbid something happens, I'm going to I'm going straight to Russia or wherever. Don't go to Russia. Hey, we'll, yeah. We'll go to Korea. <laughs> no, don't together. go to Russia. We'll go to Korea or, or Colombia or some shit. All right, man. Listen, right. you take care. Okay. All right. Thanks, take care. You got Bye-bye. it. Bye-bye. That was a nice call. Yeah, very nice call, man. Very nice what? call. What was that, Dave? It was a good call. Yeah. All right, uh, we have time. We have time for another one. Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's calling? Where are you calling from? Uh, hey, Spencer, this is Curtis from Virginia. I've called you in the past, and I don't know if you remember me, but in the just a quick background. Yeah, remind me. I'm, I'm 52. Had been through five hair transplants. Oh Ooh. shit! Yeah, you yeah. Know, I remember. I remember you. Total Curtis. struggle. Every, every everything you've been through in your life, you talked about being young, your twenties, going to bars. I mean, it's a mirror. Yeah. And I'm just now. I mean, I've made it through. You know, I've made it. And so, <laughs> I'm really sympathizing with people who are just in this battle. But I mean, it was like 25 years. Just and now I'm, you know, finally have, you know, I'm comfortable. And as you say, in my own skin. 
Well, and sometimes, it, yeah. sadly, it's, sometimes it takes that long, you know, and that's why I always advise these young guys to, you know, fucking close their laptops, get off the Internet, stay off the message forms, and figure well, out a way to live your life. Well, I didn't have all that. I've got it. Well, I started because, you know, I had the hair transplant because I didn't know, and there was no Internet. And the guy, you know, it was a guy in D.C., Whitey. I don't know if you remember him. I do. I remember Absolutely. him. And, and they still grow. I mean, and, and it looks good now. I mean, and I have good hair now, but what a freaking ride it's been. You know, and, and I, didn't, I thought I was out there by myself to your show the last few years. Well, listen, and the thing is, you're definitely not alone. There are millions of us. Millions of us. It's insane. You know, when I started to do this, I knew, you know, first of all, when I initially tried to sell my book, I just remember when I was turned down by those 14 agents, you know, agent after agent was just like, how are you going to sell a book on hair loss? You're not a doctor. It's really not that interesting of a subject. And finally, a sufferer, uh, and uh, Frank, I know you're not really suffering, but my, I found an agent, and he said, you know what, I think I can sell this book. And then the same shit happened with the publishers. I was turned down by 33 publishers. I'm like, listen, I'm not the only one who feels this. Believe me, I, you know, I, I know that Obviously, you know, it made me, it be, I became depressed over it over the years, but I knew that I wasn't the only one. And as soon as that book okay. sold, we were able to prove it. And, and, and but, but, uh, your question I do want to ask, because I know it's wrong, is it's, it's good. And I'd say I'm 80% happy. You know, I'm going to live my life here. And I probably have one more in me, you know what I mean? And then I'll be done with like any donor. So, but, but what I'm hearing on your show, I just want to get your opinion with you guys, is I'm going to wait because it seems like the technology is just getting better and better. And if I don't, and if I'm pretty happy right now, it seems like every time I really think about doing it, it's like, well, we might be doing this or we're refining this or we're getting better at that. Well, I mean, well, I, it, 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 it also really depends. Now, you've already had five procedures. I, yeah. I can guarantee yeah. that you've had at least, uh, if you started back in the day, you probably had some plugs done. And, oh, wow. It was awful. Well, the first three were plugs. Yeah, and th and then you had uh, at least one strip procedure or two strip procedures, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of scar Perfect. there's a lot of scarring back there. If you have enough yeah. donor area, frankly, it's possible they can improve your situation in your donor depending on how much uh, a how much hair you have, and also if in fact you have enough. I mean, it, it looks laxity. like, like with the, I mean, it, it looks like right now you can think like. It looks like I, it looks like I have a full head of hair. Well, uh, Joe Joe is the guy who's had yeah, multiple right. surgeries, so he could advise you really well. But the truth is, since you're already in the position that you're, you're in, uh, waiting for future technology may not necessarily be. I mean, I don't necessarily think it's important if you believe that you want the surgery, you know, in the next couple of years. But if you're my, happy with what you have, then by all means, just wait. That well, well I, I, I don't was going to say. Just just wait because you just said you look like you got a full head of hair. So what else do you want? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, not to use like a little hairspray and gel and all that. But, well, you know, how dare everyone you? Everyone does. I mean, I don't, I don't see any yeah. problem with that. And, and frankly, you know, it, it gets it gets should get it should get to the point where you've had five. I mean, you know, yeah. I'm I'm one to talk. I've had ten, but um, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. it's like <laughs> once you get to the point where it looks like you got a full head of hair, and yeah, you gotta you, you gotta use hairspray. So what? You're done. Right. As long as it looks natural, pack it in. Buddy. Yeah, I mean, I can go. I can go, I can go swimming, you know. I can, you know, and I mean, you know, I got to tell like, you know, like my you're wife, because uh, your hair is too crunchy. But I, you know, I live with that. Yeah, you're oh. done. But surgery's done for you, yeah. man. Yeah, I mean, my you, hair you've is reached the, the goal that everyone's looking for. My hair is not. My hair is beyond crunchy. It's rock <laughs> solid. I could take a bullet. <laughs> Cr <Right>. Crunchy. <laughs> 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 but I'm telling you, your show has really meant a lot to me because for all the grief you get, it was like I thought I was just by myself. I can't. Exp I can't. You probably, I just felt alone. Of course, so long. Like because you, you can't talk to anyone about it. I mean, because you, you talk to someone about it and they kind of look at you like 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 you're a leper. It's like what hair yeah, loss? You're, yeah, you're, me, you're upset about your hair loss? Get out of here. You know. Here's an observation I made. I want to get your opinion. If you just meet someone for the first time and, and they're already bald, you don't. It doesn't matter. You accept them. What the worst part is, as you're going through hair loss, and people that you know and they're seeing you lose your hair over time, they treat you like you have a disease or there's something wrong with you. That was the worst part. You know, 
I see, I meet someone now who's bald. I don't even think twice. They look fine. It's the when you know somebody and you see them going through the process, people treat you like crap. Well, it's because they got they got some sort of issue that they're trying to deal with. I mean, uh, exactly. honestly, if someone if someone looks at someone that's got hair loss and and thinks that there's something wrong with them, then then they're not right. Because how can you yeah, look at yeah. half of the male population on the planet and think that they're they're sick? Well, I don't even mean something wrong, but like there's less than. I, you, yeah, I know you know what I'm talking about. They, yeah. as you, if you start to lose your hair in front of people you know, they treat you like less than you were. Well, I, you know the the jokes start to happen, and sadly, yeah. okay. especially when you're a younger person. I mean, you do become uh, this this target for these you know for these jabs and. Unfortunately, it makes you feel uh, like you might, you know, like you're a little inferior, especially if you yeah. are involved with a group of friends who have completely full heads of hair. Yeah, you it, don't want to be the one pointed out as being the different, and, the one that looks like they're getting older faster than the other guys. And then all of a sudden, the girls aren't, aren't reacting to you the same way that they did right. when you had a full head of hair. And it's, it's devastating, man. Look, this, I mean, look, it, look at what I do for a living. You know how <laughs> fucked up I was over this? <laughs> You know, it changes how you. Yeah, it changes with how they view you in some kind of weird social pecking order. I mean, it's just such a weird. It's the weirdest thing I've ever went through in my life. Well, let me tell you, me too, bro. Me too, and that's me why. Too. That's why I'm sitting behind this mic, and that's why Joe Tillman is on the program, and that's why we do what we do because, you know, listen. I was I was interviewed uh, today from by a, a major uh, a metropolitan newspaper. I'm not going to say which newspaper because you never know when these things come out. And I was I was speaking to a female reporter or a journalist, and she was pretty empathetic. She really was. We were actually talking about um, you know women's hair loss, but we we started to talk about guys and my experience and stuff like that. And it's still to this day, and I'm almost 50 years old. I I still get a little anxiety sometimes when I'm talking yeah. about my situation because you know this is a new person that's never heard my story that. Yeah. Really doesn't understand, well, like what you paint your head. What does that mean? Really, you wear makeup on your scalp. It, it's such a part of your <laughs> of your existence that you forget that it's the first time that you're that you're you know this person you're talking to is even hearing about this. The, the right. terminal, the terminology itself, the vernacular in our little, you know, sick group, <laughs> <laughs> our twisted <laughs> twisted uh, group of guys here is something that's so far removed from from you know the everyday language that people use. That you know, five seconds after you say the word and you've moved on to a different subject, they're still thinking, "What? What the hell is DHT?" Yeah, or you know, or or, oh, or what? Well, what I, don't know if you guys saw this, I don't know if you guys saw the story. It was on the news a few weeks ago. I don't know if you've talked about it on the show. I try to listen all the time. There's a there, there was a school system in this rural county where kids get bad grades and they cha they shave them to like a Norwood six. Them. Yeah, yeah, and that was a punishment. Yeah. I mean, if that's all you need to know. I mean, if you don't need this any more than that's how we punish people. <laughs> we we shave them into a Norwood story? six. Jesus. They you, call it they call it the uh, Benjamin Button. Yeah, yeah, and they had oh, they, no. they had a picture of a little black kid with he was yeah. shaved down to a Norwood I mean, six, and he looked mortified. And he oh they they, they made these kids gross, go to school that but, way. But society views that as the meat. The, what else do we need to know? That's how we punish people. Yeah, that's that's a good point. That's, that's a good point. That's, that's actually that's, it's yeah. an unfortunate experiment in, in social uh, social um, uh, vision of of hair loss and what it means. Absolutely. I, well, I mean, that, when, when I saw when I saw that, that was like that's how we punish people. So, ah, but look, listen, look, look, look at how they treat uh, hair loss in the movies and you know through mainstream media and just. You know, it's, that's it's, one of my favorite subjects. Yeah, it's horrible. It it really is horrible. And you know, well, I was. I was Lowe, did you see the Rob Lowe commercial? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. The, the direct TV commercial. Yeah, same, same shit. Listen, I was at a New Year's Eve party. I tell the story. Told the story a couple of times. I'll try to make it short because we we actually. I'm sure Joe has to go. And we, we, even though we have more calls, but uh, yeah. he's, he's good. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, uh, so this girl, this woman. You know, she kept saying, you know, you just, you, you're, you know, she, obviously she felt I was a, an attractive guy. And she's like, you would be so hot if you just cut your hair, you know, your hair's too long. And I'm trying to explain, well, you know, I kind of have to wear it a certain way because, you know, I, I have some hair loss and, and she's like, it doesn't matter. Just cut, if you cut your hair short and she kept, and she's like, I'm going to tell your wife, whatever it is. My 
my wife basically told her to shut up. You know, nice. just just told what? her, listen, I love the way his hair is. Just sh basically shut the fuck up. And that was a very odd, you know, it obviously didn't make me feel good, but it just shows you that, you know, even though she didn't realize I was bald, you know, there was something in her eyes, there might've been something off that night. And she felt, right. and she felt I needed a haircut. But, but, or to be honest, we are just see it through a filter of being off. It might've been totally innocent. Well, That's yeah. our problem. That's yeah. over the years because there's so much of that, that we filter everything through that lens of, they're saying something's off. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, she may just like short hair. You yeah, know? I mean, it, it was totally innocent. And But we've been through... I'll, I'll have a quick set of, So I was at a meeting for work, and about eight of us out, and my hair is thick and very... Which is good, very coarse, which has made it look thicker, right? Yeah. So, you know, this, I didn't really do much. So everybody was drinking, and this guy sitting next to me that I work with, and, and I'm just going to say it, because what he said to me, I mean... Fat, very fat, comb over, right. blotchy skin, looks at me. Somebody spills their beard and goes, well, maybe you can use that Brillo pad on top of your head to wipe it up. Wow. Whoa. Them's, them's are fighting words, man. <laughs> Those are fighting words. Well I, well, I looked at him and laughed because the girl next to me goes, I wish she has better hair than I do. You're right. <laughs> yeah. See, and, and <laughs> redemption. redemption. See, uh, but that, that's, when I, that's when I realized I was filtering all my, like, he just was being, you know, he didn't even know my history. You right. know what I mean? He didn't know. You know, he just said it like it's probably no big deal. It even mean, you know what I mean? Of course. But we are yeah. ultra sensitive to it. In his mind, you probably just have like really thick, coarse hair. Yeah. Yeah. But I was proud and so happy that I didn't give a shit. Yeah. Now, this is really, really that was like one of the first times in my life I didn't give a shit what this guy thought. And that's, th that's been a long time coming. Well, listen, man, I'm happy for you, man. I'm glad you've, yeah. you've be become comfortable in your own skin. And, you know, I'm glad you've, that the show has helped you, man. I really am. It helped me a lot, a lot, a lot. So, all, all right, right, man. Well, you listen, th th you th thanks for the call, bro. And it was good talking to you. I know, right. I think the last time you called was probably over a year ago, right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, listen, you take care. Thanks for the call. All right. Thanks for calling. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Joe, you have time to take another call? Sure, I'm here. All right, let's, let's see who this is. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dave is just hanging on. Let's see. I'm here. All right. Uh, Put on, see. Dave. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this Thank and you. where are you calling from? Hey, man, you're on the air. If you've been holding for a while, just speak. You're on the air. <laughs> All right. Hey, you're on the I'm air. On who's this? I'm on the air. You are. Who's this, Joe? Oh, you Yes. How are you, man? Hello, Joe. That's Joe. How are you, Joe? I'm good, sir. How about you? All right. I wanted to, you know, clarify something that's going on on the Ball of Truth uh, talk. Okay. Let's let's hear about it. About, about my model pros. People are spreading rumors that Allergen said it will be announced in a year. That's not true. I called the company up myself. They're giving no information out at all about it. Well, there you go. That's that's important information for people, Joe. It is. They may be already in phase three, as far as anybody knows. They said that if it was working phase two B, that they would go right into phase three. Well, there you go. We have no well we, we have no idea. That's the, that's the problem. That's the problem with the forums, dude. It's just, there's just so much misinformation that's being spread, and there's so much confusion. And everyone's just so desperate to get their hands on whatever they can get their hands on to help them with their hair loss. I can guarantee you that after tonight's show, or especially once it goes online, there are going to be so many people who are going to be disappointed that... Uh, um, Pilot th focus. Yeah, Poloscopy. Thank Poloscopy. you. Poloscopy. Yeah. yeah. Poloscopy is not going to be available next week. I still think it's pilo pilo focus. It's pilo uh, focus. Uh, uh, pilo Piloscopy. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like pillow focus. And, yeah, and, and pilo focus is correct. <laughs> yeah, so his you know piloscopy or pilo focus is not going to be available next week. And there's going to be so many people are going to say, "Oh, it's bullshit." He's there's a couple of real negative guys online who are going to, you know, just be pissed off. That's the way it is. Guys there's online. Certainly. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there certainly is. So, uh, did you and uh, Joe make up, uh, Dave? What's going on here? That's what I want to know. Dave, yeah, yeah, Dave Artista. This is me, this is Artista, right? Yeah. 
Oh, I'm not even mad at them. Why? Well, I'm not mad at them. I'm just going through a major, you know, depression right now. I'm not mad at him. He's been sharing with me how bad he's been feeling lately. I've been trying to give him advice, but uh, he's not really listening to it. I don't think. Okay, Joe? but you guys are good, though, right? You, you're you guys have uh, yeah. you guys are back on on speaking terms. Oh yes, I would okay. say so. Yeah. Joe? Okay. No, I'm using my laser. Hey, you know, Doctor Bowman. Doctor Bowman called me. Said how I was doing on my laser cap. That how's that nice. going? Well, I'm using it for two months now. I mean, she's a minor effect. You know, nothing major. You know, but it takes at least six months. Well, at least, but uh, I, I believe the last time you were on, if it was what maybe two weeks ago, that you were already saying that you you saw some improvements. So, is there anything above and beyond that? Or is it just kind of status quo? That's the status quo. Status okay. Status. All right. But I understand. He's, he takes up six months. he's been quite depressed over this. Depressed? Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm about right. to hang myself just listening to this. <laughs> okay. No, you know what? I'm depressed but, for because I've been on the air with Spencer since 1998. Oh, well, I, I used to have a much bigger role in the show, as we all know, but... Well, who fucked that up, Joe? I told you I was sorry, Spencer. I, I said I'm sorry. <laughs> what can I say? I've been loyal to you since 1998, right? Lo- what loyal? I've been loyal to you, right? I, right. I, 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 I've given you the opportunity to call the program, no matter what. Even though every program director in radio told me you got to stop this guy from calling the show. I felt a certain sense of, you know, the, the show helped you out. You enjoyed being a part of it. You enjoyed being a regular caller. So I allowed that to happen for many, 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 many years and did whatever I could to help you over the years. So I was a little uh, more than disappointed uh, the way things went down. But I still give you a voice. So I don't know what else you want from me. You got a free well, laser cap on the deal, that's for sure. Yeah, well, he, he, he opted for the... Uh, he didn't take the free one. He opted for the at cost. Ah, uh, well, is it a different model or is it the same thing? No, it's the same thing. But you know, initially he didn't want to, he didn't want Doctor Bauman to come in. It was a whole thing. Yeah. You know. So then he's like, "Well, you know, I want to pay for it. I I, I don't want to go through the whole story, but yeah. Anyway, you're still hooked up, and you're still welcome to call the show anytime you want, Joe. I don't know what else you what else can I do for you. No, I just wanted to pose one question. Nothing. I'm not, I'm not mad at anyone about anything. Good. Just saying. You know, I, I just want to pose one question to you. You've been on the air since 1998. Do you think it would be 2015 and we still wouldn't have a, a super effective treatment out there? We'd have the same stuff as we had since I, 1998? I, I was as naive as most people out there back in 1998. The only thing that I that I knew was what I knew, what I learned, what I, you know, the research that I, that I did. And really, I concentrated on the products and services that were available that day, you know, in that time, and uh, surgical hair restoration and, you know, the reality of the industry and kind of exposing what was going on. That's what I knew. So when I came into this, when I first got on the radio, I believed, like you guys, that when researchers were saying that something is five years away, that that was a strong possibility. I even believed in guys like, you know, the guy in the Netherlands who was working on hair cloning, who kind of like resurfaces every few years with, you know, uh, kind of a new surge of online notoriety. Um, you know, you know who I'm talking about. I mean, I was, oh, yeah. I was definitely as naive as, as a lot of you guys as far as that was concerned. But um, so to answer your question, no, I didn't think we'd be here in 2015. I'd be almost 50 years old still doing this show. It's actually pretty unbelievable. Uh, Now I'm kind of depressed. (laughs) (laughs) You know? Oh, man. But you know what? I'm also happy that we're able to do it because listen to like our last caller, man. What's what's the name from Virginia? Is it Thomas? Thomas, I think. Yeah, I think it was Thomas. Yeah. I'm sorry, Thomas, if I I forgot your name. Um, you know, obviously the show means something to them, and there's thousands of guys who never take the time to call in. You know, they don't want to, and I get that. It's a radio show. 
you know, people usually just listen, um, who have been helped by the process, by the show, by listening, by, you know, hearing your story, Joe, from Staten Island, and Joe Tillman's story, and Dave Artista's story, and all the guys that, you know, like to participate in the program. You know, we've changed a lot of lives, so, you know what, maybe it's not so bad that we're still around. And I, and I, I think it's just, uh, I think it's just a really, when you think about it, um, it, it's a pretty cool vehicle for, for guys to come together that do have this issue because, you know, normally if you, if you were to describe to someone the fact that men of all ages get together on a radio, you know, listen to a radio program about losing their hair, you, they'd think that you're crazy, but yeah. it works. Yeah. And I, I think it's, I, I know Dave Artista, cool. Dave Artista wanted me to, to, to kind of help him produce the small penis show. <laughs> Which I think would, that's, I think that's a great idea, Dave. It's a by great the way. idea. There are a lot of guys out there. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm just kidding, guys. Anyway, of course. Uh, <laughs> l- <laughs> One final comment. I wanted to say this much. I wanted to say yeah. this much. Back in 2013, I was I was willing to be accepting of what my hair loss was going to be, and I was planning on possibly shaving my head. But then, uh, with all the influence, the uh, advice given to me with finasteride, I tried finasteride and it really helped. And then of course when Dr. Wesley invited me into that face testing, that you know <laughs> that's great. Yeah. It's exciting to, to, to know. But I was willing to accept my hair loss for what it is and move on. Live my life. Which is a I think that's a healthy way to be. That's w- that's where you need to be. And then if if the options become available to actually do something about it, then you're already you're already at the 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 baseline that you should be, because you're happy yeah. without it, you're you're fine without it, and, and then if you can, if you can get something on top of it, it's bonus, it's and, gravy. And I'm I'm in a position where I know that I want to live the rest of my life with some form of hair in my head. So whether it's from yeah. you know some 15 year old Indian chick, or you know it's my own, I it, it's going to be there. Yeah, you know exactly. And that's it. I'm I'm I've resolved myself to that. And I'll t- just listen. That's just. I, I have no issue with that. Yeah, you know what? It's not. It's not ideal. That's if, sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's not ideal. You know, somebody, if 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 I do continue to lose my hair, it's not going to be an ideal situation. If I have to end up, you right. know, going and either getting a transplant or wearing a piece, but I know that that's how I'll be comfortable. So yes, fuck if, it. If fuck I what people think. Shave my, exactly. If I were to shave back in two thousand thirteen, if I were to shave my head off my hair off yeah and people looked at me you know with critical looks i wouldn't care well i think that take that i i I admire the fact that that was even an option for you because for me that's not part of my life's equation i will choose to to glue hair to my scalp to the day i die if that has to be the case or that too or you know go in if you know i'd probably end up starting with surgery if I need it yeah. at some point. Right. And that's it. That, that's how, that, that, that's my move. But my question is, is if you went to a piece, would you do just the front and still paint the back of your head or would you just go front to back? That, <laughs> that would be hilarious. That's actually a very funny question. <laughs> I think if I just did the front, I would probably fool a lot of people. I'm just talking consistency here. Yeah. Right? Just for consistency. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't want to disturb your routine. So all of a sudden, yeah, I'll have a puff of your back and people are going to start saying, what's going on? That's that's a hell of a spray, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's a hell of a <laughs> hell of a paint job. You know, that's actually very interesting. And maybe I would just wear something like in the mid anterior and the front because it, it overall would be lighter, you know, and it won't the the attachment process would probably be easier. Yeah, that's that's right. actually that's that's a good thought. Listen, guys, Joe. I think Joe had a question. Joe hung up. No, I, no, oh. I'm on the phone. Oh, you're on, okay. Okay. So, what do you want to say? I mean. I'm just saying, we all thought in 2015 we'd have some type of a topical, there'd be hair cloning. We all thought this would happen in 1998. We did. Really? I know. Here we are, 2015, none of it's happened. But, you know, I, I think about my life back then. I mean, I was 32 years old doing this crazy show. And, you know, when you, you think back at guys our age, I mean, that's young. So I was all bright-eyed and hopeful, and I believed what these scientists and these doctors were telling me, uh, even though I knew what I knew what was happening in, you know, in, in the field that I studied as far as surgical hair restoration and you know, the rest of the snake oils. But I was, I was as hopeful as you, Joe. I really was. And when I would talk about this on the air and people would ask me, 
if we're going to have something that's going to be more effective in five years, at least my first year on the radio, I would say, yes, I really believe that. But as time marched on, I started to uh, basically, you know, my message was, listen, live for, you know, live for today. We have no idea what the fuck's going on. There's a lot of disappointment. Right. You know, take everything with a grain of salt. Be hopeful. Uh, you know, cautiously optimistic. Don't but... rock the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, don't do not rock the boat. <laughs> Jesus. But uh, well, the question I get, I, I, I'm sorry. You, yeah. you can't let life pass you by. The impression I get keep going. is that you believe today that a cure or viable treatment is really year, years and years away, if not decades. No, no, right. no, I don't think a viable treatment is, is, is years and years away. I think there's going to be other viable treatments that are getting closer. I Listen. I've I've uh, I was talking to this reporter about uh, uh, PRP today, and I really have seen some astonishing results. And I'm not I'm not just saying that. And this is from a person who I have I have no financial ties with. I have no connection with. But you know, for whatever reason, in this guy's practice, him and his brother's practice, they seem to be getting really good results. Uh, women are contacting me. They're happy. They you know they're reversing the miniaturization process. And this is basically from drawing blood, you know, having a simple procedure and having it re-injected into your scalp. So, you know, there, there are improvements, Joe. There are things, things are changing. And, and I, th I think it's just going to be a continuation of, of baby steps towards the, the, the ultimate goal. It's, I, don't, I, don't, I have a hard time believing that someone's just going to, you know, swing the doors open one day and say, here it is. Yeah, and it's going, to, it's going to be something that's a game changer in the in the in the manner that it it, it replaces everything overnight. I don't think that we're going to get something like that. I right. think it's going to be something that we'll be working towards in in you know small incremental improvements in treatments, non surgical treatments. I think are well, obviously the 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 next next new frontier that uh, we're making great strides in. But I, I think that it's just going to take a, a long time to get to that point. But it's not going to be like in five years and we're not going to be in the same place. I think we'll be in a, a much better place, but we're not going to be there yet. Um, I agree. I agree. I think, I think that's I a fair assessment. That too. Yeah. Well, guys, listen, we're, we're going to close up shop. Uh, we had a, it was a fun show. I know that we're not streaming now, but obviously people will be able to watch uh, this recorded part of the broadcast. And we mm -hmm. had some good calls at the end. So uh, it was a lot of fun. Joe from Staten Island, thank yeah. you so much for calling in. Thank you, Spencer, for taking my call. Good night, Dave. Good night, Joe. Good night, Joe. Good hearing from you. Good night, Joe. Dave, Dave Artista, thanks for taking the time to gather those questions and to uh, call in to ask Dr. Wesley what was on the minds of our uh, forum users. So I appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you. And it was good talking with you guys. You got yeah, it. Yeah. Good hearing from you, Dave. Have a good night. Okay. I'm going to hang up on both okay, of you guys. Okay. You too. Take care. All right. Joe nice Tillman. Time. Joe Tillman, thank you so much for, uh, for hanging out for the extra 25 minutes. My pleasure. It was it was a it was a great great night of calls. Um, it was awesome talking to Doctor Wesley, and um, yeah, it was it was good times. All right, man. Listen, thanks a lot, guys. I'm going to pot you down. Thanks a lot, Joe. Uh, always always a pleasure having you on, guys. Uh, the website, theballtruth.com, of course, for archived broadcasts of this show. If you are interested in uh, getting information on hair loss in general, uh, treatment options, uh, surgical hair restoration, you can go to AmericanHairLoss.org. That is the American Hair Loss Association website. If you are considering surgical hair restoration, please, you know, do your due diligence. Remember, surgery is always the last resort, but if it's something that you really uh, think will help your life, check out the, the International Alliance of Hair Restoration Surgeons at IAHRS.org. Until next time, be strong. God bless, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for any inconvenience you may have been put to prior to the program, and I'm glad you enjoyed it. And if you could now leave by the exits at the rear, that would be splendid. Thank you. Good night.